thank you everybody and, and colleagues and the public. Thanks for your patience. Uh, the September 8th, 2020 Committee on Zoning, Landmarks and Building Standards is called to order. Pursuant to applicable law, the chairman has determined that an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent. Accordingly, attendance at this meeting will be by remote means only. We will start off with a roll call. Committee members, uh, please unmute yourself. On the roll call, Alderman Hopkins. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Alderman Hopkins present. Alderman Dowell. Here. Alderman Sawyer. Alderman Sawyer. Alderman Beal. Alderman Beal. Alderman Ray Lopez. Live from West Englewood, here. Alderman Moore. Present. Alderman Rodriguez. Present. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Present. Alderman Burnett. Present. Alderman Raboyas. Present. Alderman Cardona. Present. Alderman Wagesback. Present. Alderman Austin. Present. Alderman Viegas. Present. Alderman Riley. Present. Alderman Kappelman. Present. Alderman Osterman. Present. Alderman Haddon. Present. Chairman Tunney is here. 18 members. We have 18 members here. We have a quorum. The Chairman Alderman Beale is present with a poor connection. All right. Alderman Beale is here. All right, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start this morning off with the approval of the Rule 45 report containing the minutes of the July Committee on Zoning, Landmark, and Building Standard hearing. All members of the committee should have received a copy of this report electronically. And if hearing no objections, do I have a motion by the same roll? Roll call vote that was used. Riley moves to pass. To approve the minutes. Alderman Riley makes the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no objection, the report has been approved. Moving on, we will now hear the items to be deferred. I will read the ward, the file number, the address, and lastly, the reason for deferral and take a motion for all at the end. So starting in the 48th Ward, file number 20440, located at 5051 North Broadway. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. In the 44th Ward, file number 20454, located at 1134 West Diversity Parkway, deferred per the attorney. In the 42nd Ward, file number 20443, located at 400 through 418 East Grand Avenue, 529 through 549 North McClure Court and 401 through 429 East Ohio Street. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. In the 40, 41st Ward, file number 20441, located at 5656 North Newcastle Avenue. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. In the 33rd Ward, file number 20442, located at 3557 West Lawrence Avenue is deferred per Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. In the 32nd Ward, file number 20450-T1, located at 1907 West Fullerton Avenue. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. In the 27th Ward, file number 20457-T1, located at 1317 West North Avenue. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. In the 27th Ward, file number 20439, located at 1939 through 1959 West Lake Street, 115 through 159 North Damon, 1900 through 1958 West Maypole, 1901 through 1959 West Maypole. Is that true? We'll go through. Oh, both sides of the street, I'm sorry. 1900 through 1948 West Washington, 
100 through 146 North Walcott. This item has not been before the Plan Commission. Also in the 27th Ward, file number 20444, T1, located at 1423 through 1427 North Sedgwick Street, deferred per the attorney. And lastly, in the 11th Ward, file number 20438, located at 2424 South Halsted Street, this item has not been before the Plan Commission. If no questions by committee members, do I hear a motion to defer these items by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? So move. Alderman Raboyas moves to defer. Any objections? Hearing none, these items are deferred. At this time, we will now begin the public comment period. Out of respect for everyone's time, each speaker is limited to three minutes to address all items on the agenda. This will be the only opportunity to address these items on the agenda and will not conduct separate public comment before each agenda item. And we have seven speakers signed up today. And we will start with speaker number one, Ina Oderman. Ina, are you connected? Good morning. My name is Inna Elterman, and I have lived on Whelan Street with my family for 11 years. I will be speaking against the amendments to a hotel project on Well Street in Old Town. Please take a note. It's agenda number 14, application number 20436. At the last meeting, our neighbors and I spoke passionately about how this project would negatively affect us. Alderman Burnett spoke in support of the project and then recused himself, making it clear that he has a personal connection. In the comments I've submitted in writing, I have outlined his connection in detail. Please refer to it. No alderman was going to vote against a fellow committee member. Nothing we said mattered. This was Chicago politics that gives our city the bad rep. Please make your decision based on what you have been elected to do, what is best for your constituency, not what is best for your colleague. Also, please remember your legal duties and responsibilities. Voting for this project will go against various laws and ordinances, and should you vote for it, we will appeal. Please, is somebody talking in the background? Please review submitted documents for details. At the last hearing, Alderman Burnett said there was only a handful of us opposing the project, and he has letters of support. Among the documents we have provided, you will find a petition signed by 688 community members. Alderman has a letter from one family in support. This family is also building on the streets, so they need Alderman support themselves. A lot of us know that there is a colony of black crowned night herons at the southernmost point of Lincoln Park. These are one of the rarest of the birds and endangered. There were only 50 left in 2007, and now there is 600. The hotel will be directly in their flight path. There has been absolutely no studies done on how the proposed rooftop bar, its height, light, and sound will affect the environment, and no environmentalists were consulted. Can we, as a human race, be responsible for another species to be gone to make room for one more bar? There is a five-year oversupply of hotel rooms in Chicago even prior to pandemic. Making this hotel bigger than what was, has been approved will not bring any additional revenue or permanent jobs to the city. Last but not least, you're about to allow a 12-story hotel on a one-lane, two-block residential street with two schools. How can hotel make sense here from an urban planning perspective? The applicants will tell you there is no hotel on Wheeland, but it's not true. Look at the plans for yourself. The single-family homes are turned sideways and provide only a 25-foot buffer. Let me say it again. You're about to allow a 12-story hotel on a residential street with three-story single-family homes and two schools. Committee members, please think how you want to be remembered. Please think of the Chicago you want your children and grandchildren to grow up in. The aesthetic, the environment, the historic significance, and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Colleen Murphy. Hi, can you hear me? We can, Colleen, proceed. Great, thank you. In adding to Ina's arguments, I also have been a resident of Wheeland Street and have been in excess of 20 years. 
I, I live across the street from this project and I also obviously work in the community just like everybody else on this call. There's four main points here that I would really like to draw your attention to. The first is the point that this developer came to the residents of this street and sat in on a community meeting in 2016. Attended, it was a packed house, attended by hundreds of people. None of which, not one person was in support of this hotel project other than the developer who happened to live on the street. Um, since then, additional financial developers have been involved in the project. And obviously they have a financial interest in the outcome here. They are now trying to renegotiate this project and the deal that they came to with the residents. Please turn to page 24 of their amendment proposal to you. You will see the renderings that they've submitted of the, of the changes they want to make on the Wheeland side of the project. And when you look at page 24, you will see the four single family hotel, or I'm sorry, sort four single family residences that they promised the street. And uh, in exchange for agreeing to them to even to build this PD in this hotel. <clears throat> Again, this hotel was sold as a boutique hotel with four single family homes on the residential side of the project. Now, for their own financial interest, they're trying to renegotiate that deal and build two 25 foot deep sideways homes on our street instead of the four single family homes they promised us in exchange for our acquiescence to the very large project. Uh, that's the first part. Second is, this is not a minor amendment. You know how the municipal code reads. Minor amendments are to be brought before this board, not massive changes to a PD like they're proposing in this, in this case. Obviously, this is going to hurt our property values to have two sideways homes connected to a garage. The third point is this is not in conformance with the street. That's one of the major tests you need. The lots on Whelan are 120 to 125 feet deep on that side of the street. These are going to be 25 feet deep attached to a parking garage. Lastly, and most importantly, please look at the Illinois law. The standard of review in this case is yes, is this change that you're about to make a law arbitrary and capricious? And when you read those cases, I, I urge you to look at the different uh, zoning board appeals that have been brought before you. And lastly, I'd like to add that Mayor Lightfoot uh, introduced Executive Order 290. Okay, thank you, Colleen. Your time is up. Next speaker is, and I correct me, uh, I apologize for mispronouncing uh, if I do, uh, Matt Blauvelt. Matt. Yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Proceed, sir. Perfect. <clears throat> this project is an example of everything that's wrong in the zoning process in Chicago. Uh, we as taxpayers, the people who are directly affected by these developments, should have a clear voice and be represented by our elected officials. And this is clearly not the, the case here. Our community group, which is the Old Town uh, Merchants Association, uh, has been run and the board has been handpicked by one of the partners in this particular deal. Um, we have also uh, been in multiple conversations with the DPD and sent multiple uh, affidavits to them, which were actually never presented at the last uh, zoning meeting. So we're not getting represented there. Also, uh, Alderman Burnett, he has been a close friend of the same major partner of the Old Town Merchant Society, and he was supposed to recuse himself of this particular um, this case. Now he did, uh, did he did not vote, but he did give an absolute glowing review of how much support the community is giving this. And at the end of his speech, he said, "Why well, I've got to recuse myself for voting," and three if not four of the members specifically said they were gonna vote for it based solely on what he said. That was their determining factor. Um, he also said that, there, that the developer had gone 
uh, way out and above and had done several compromises and the compromises that he gave up were amazing. Well, there was zero compromise. The neighborhood got nothing. Uh, the units went from 190 hotel units to 203. There are supposed to be no curb cuts. There is now two more additional curb cuts. And there are there were supposed to be four houses on the original plan. Now they get cute and they say, oh, no, there we went from four to three. That's not the case. The same exact equity member of this development owned the house just north of it. So to change this, they added that in. It's not part of the product project whatsoever, zero percent. And they're saying that that is one of their residential houses or a, 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 a two, two uh, multifamily location. None of that's none of that's the case. So we've got two additional curb cuts, and we've lost two of the houses that we were supposed to have on there. We're not being represented here. Um, the overwhelming vote. And when asked, Alderman Bur Burnett said, "If there's so much vehement op opposition to this." You know, why would you, you know, why should we vote? For you? I said, well. Thank you, Matt. Your time is up. Next speaker, Rodney Brown. Rodney Brown, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Rodney, you can proceed. Thank you. My name is Rodney Brown. I'm a member of the Executive Committee of the North Landau Community Coordinating Council. I'm the Executive Director of the New Covenant CDC in North Landau. I am here to speak on behalf of the North Landau Employment Network and the work they're doing in the community. Brenda Palms Barman, Executive Director of that uh, organization, has been a community leader in North Landau for more than 20 years now. The work they are doing to restore jobs for this community has been tremendous. Brenda has been working at NLEN for 20 years. She is one of the founding members of the North Landau Community Coordinating Council. When we look at the work that she's doing, she is looking to reduce unemployment in North Landale by at least 10%. The unemployment rate in North Landale far exceeds that of the, of the rest of the city of Chicago and thereby I say the state of Illinois. And the work they're doing there is, is work that needs to be done. She is looking to open up a campus, a workforce development campus at 1111 South Homan in North Landale. And we are here to voice our support for that. NLCCC has more than 600 community members that are involved. We have 13 different committees. We have 13 different chairs are all standing behind us saying this is the organization that we want to see develop and build this workforce development center in our community. When we look at the work that she's done, they provide service more than 500 clients a year. They, pro they produce over 400 different workshops and they have a program called U-Turn United, U-Turn United Return rather, that helps ex-offenders find new jobs and change their lives. So it's not just about finding new jobs, it's also about getting them the kind of service and support they need so they can be successful in maintaining those jobs once they get them. The work that she's doing in our community is, is, is by far excellent and no one has been able to do anything like that since she's been there. So we are strongly supporting what she's doing. This workforce development campus is serving as an inspiration for the rest of the community. We look at the rest of the community-based organizations and we're looking at this and saying, if she can do this, we can do it as well. We wholeheartedly ask that you support this effort, that you do anything you can to make sure that she gets what she needs out of this. And again, thank you for your time this morning. Our next speaker is Kevin Sutton. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning, my name is Kevin Sutton. I'm the Executive Director for the Foundation for Holman Square. And for nearly 30 years, Holman Square has been a part of improving and doing community development in the North Lawndale community. We are on the phone this morning to wholeheartedly support the North Lawndale Employment Network and their new campus at 1111 South Holman. Brenda Palms Barber and her team represent all that is good about the city of Chicago and about the great west side of Chicago. We are wholeheartedly supportive of her project. We believe that the work that NLEN does is beneficial and particularly given times like this is essential to the furtherance of Chicago 
and the furtherance of our community. We wholeheartedly support this project because it brings jobs to a very needed sector of the community. Workforce development, financial literacy, re-entry training, and all other kinds of development and career programming is essential to making our community great. And NLEN has been a part of that for now decades. We are so supportive of Brenda because her commitment and dedication are shining examples of what can be done when someone begins to ignore what the story and the narrative is and looks to a brighter hope and a brighter future for a once great uh, metropolitan community and neighborhood. And so the 1111 campus for North Lawndale Employment Network would serve as a bright spot and an asset for the entire city and yet even this country to see of all that is good and what can be done when people come together and make their voices heard. And we certainly want our voice to be heard in this decision regarding Brenda and North Lawndale Employment Network. We support the project, we support the mission and the vision, and we look forward to seeing her project come to fruition. Thank you very much. Our next speaks. Our next speaker is Nancy Schock, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Nancy? Mute me. Nancy? Yes, can you hear me? We can, please proceed. Oh, thank you. My comments are regarding agenda item number 14, application number 20436, the Wells Hotel. My name is Nancy Schlack. I have lived on Wells Street near Schiller for the past 17 years. In that time, a number of residential buildings on Wells between North and Schiller have been added, with two new buildings providing 73 additional rental units in the past year alone, almost directly opposite the proposed new hotel. Going one block further south to Division adds a complex with 1,200 more residential units. The area has become more popular, more densely populated, and more congested. Those of us who live here chose Old Town for its vibrant nature, yet the traffic on weekend nights can be so dense that it can take nine minutes to drive just two blocks from North to Schiller. Delivery trucks during the day make the streets seem like a slalom course. What will the hotel add to this? The plans for the proposed hotel have been opposed by the community from the start. One of the reasons for the opposition was the large size and scope of the hotel and its impact on the already dense nature of the street. Concessions were made to gain community support and then promises were broken, bait and switch. The developers did their own traffic studies, but where have these studies been published? Did they figure how much longer it would take for emergency vehicles to reach a location on Wells, perhaps even their own hotel? In addition to the traffic congestion, the increased density impacts the infrastructure in ways that the developers have not addressed at community meetings. What about the power grid? or the water and sewer requirements for a neighborhood where some of the infrastructure is over 100 years old. Where are the data? Each time the developers come back to us, it is to change one of the previously promised compromises, bait and switch. Now they have increased the number of rooms to 203, up from 190. Each new iteration of their plan adds density rather than reduces it. There now will be venues available for rental by large groups that would be attractive for holding parties. More density, more noise. Ours is not just an entertainment district. This is a place where people live. Please do not approve the latest changes that the developers are currently seeking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker this morning is Carmen Ballou. Carmen. Hi. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Uh, we can. Are you Carmen? Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, proceed, please. Okay. 
Hi, I am here to speak today in the favor of a passage of an ADU ordinance, but in particular, I want to request that it would include RS1 and RS2 houses in that ordinance. I am grateful to many of you present today for your work on this issue, uh, but as a 47th Ward resident, I also want to thank Matt Martin for his advocacy on the issue. Our multi-generational household has been following the ordinance closely because first, we support the expansion of affordable housing in our neighborhood. Our neighborhood has grown increasingly expensive and puts access to the quality neighborhood schools and the safety the neighborhood provides out of reach for many. We support the addition of affordable housing units in many forms, but in particular today, I speak to pass an ADU ordinance to enable those additional units. Second, we are interested in this option for our family of three generations. My parents moved from Nebraska three years ago, and while they initially explored getting their own unit, we actually value our time together and living together close by. From sharing meals to assisting with piano lessons to playing numerous board games, and we want to stay together. We value the experience that multi-generational living provides, but an ADU would provide more privacy and independence to my parents than they currently have. However, as the proposed ordinance stands, we would not be able to build a garage apartment as of right for my parents. Whether intentional or a fluke of historical zoning, a few streets, including ours, are zoned RS2 and we would be excluded where many, much of the new construction, larger footprints around us, the larger footprint houses around us are RS3. I'm speaking today to give you one example of why that exclusion would be a mistake. We live in a hundred year old house and are committed to keeping its historical look, but around us, bungalow after bungalow has been torn down and replaced by larger footprint houses. By excluding RS2 units, this would continue to encourage the demolition of the smaller houses to be replaced by larger footprint houses rather than having options like ADU. By building a garage apartment instead, we keep the historical look of our house but simply expand our footprint off of an alley. And these twin goals of expanding affordable housing and encourage multi-generational living were goals that we supported before the outbreak of COVID. But now we've gone from two people, my parents home during the day with freedom and quiet, to two parents working from home, a third grader and a seventh grader enrolled in CPS as remote learning, and two grandparents, all fighting for space and quiet. While I realize it is a privilege to be able to explore this option, requiring a special use permit with its additional costs and hassle that don't even guarantee approval will likely put this option out of reach. Please pass an ADU ordinance quickly but please consider including RS1 and RS2 units in it. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the public commentary portion of the meeting. We'll start with the uh, first with the second item on the addendum. I know we have Commissioner Morrison Butler here um, to speak on it. Um, it's a direct introduction from the mayor authorizing temporary zoning uses in the 21st and 4th wards in response to COVID-19. Um, Alderman uh, Raboyas moves to accept the direct introduction by the same roll call vote that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? So moved. Hearing none, the ordinance is uh, accepted and directly introduced. Now we'll have Commissioner Morris Butler of Family and Support Services here to testify in the matter and answer any questions. Commissioner, you're on. Good morning, Alderman, uh, Chairman Tunney, and thank you very much. Um, we are here today to ask for your support so that we can um, uh, convert, essentially, and use as uh, alternate shelter space some Chicago public school buildings. Uh, the way the ordinance is written, this would be retroactive. We actually moved into these buildings already. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do today was to give you a little bit of, of history on what we're doing. So back in March, based on both the CDC recommendations as well as in a close partnership with CDPH, DFSS realized that we needed to decompress a number of our congregate shelter sites. Um, we've got the truth is we have shelters right now in about 27 wards, so our shelter footprint is really spread throughout the city. Um, and it, most of those existing shelters have um, 
smaller configurations of rooms, but we did have uh, 15, that's one five, 15 congregate shelters where people were sleeping uh, in bunk beds or in cots very close together in really large rooms. And so at the outbreak of COVID, it was clear that that was not going to allow us to keep those vulnerable populations safe. And so in about, in the, the space of about eight days, we moved hundreds of beds out of those shelters into alternate sites. Our initial alternate sites were in the private sector and that's because those buildings were ready to go and we could get into them. And we, so we initially went into places like YMCA's or to Salvation Army. Um, and while we so appreciated those individuals, uh, those uh, organizations and their willingness to accept us, we did pay handsomely uh, monthly rents for those locations. And so as it became clear to us that COVID was not going anywhere anytime soon, we realized that the best use of taxpayer dollars were to find locations where we wouldn't have to pay rent. That led us to looking at city owned buildings so we looked at park district facilities, we've looked at schools, et cetera, and uh, we are um, asking your permission today so that we can go into two uh, facilities specifically, that is the former Calumet High School and the former Young, Wo One, Young Women's Leadership School. Uh, Calumet is in Alderman Brookins Ward and uh, Young Women's is in Alderman King's Ward. Um, and we will, uh, between those two buildings, uh, it brings, it'll uh, accommodate about 540 beds that we still need in order to be able to continue to decompress the shelter footprint. Um, this is a matter of, of health. So even though the emergency situation associated with COVID may have passed, the truth is from a human and social service standpoint, we are still very much in an emergency and we need to be able to decompress our existing shelters and continue to put these folks in other locations. Um, uh, Chairman Tunney, I'll, I'll shut up now and just uh, entertain questions. I don't want to drone on if people are already familiar. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, just, I know the first question um, that I have is um, Alderman Brookins and Alderman Sophia King. Um, they've been briefed and uh, what is their reaction? Are they okay with it? Um, both of them has been, have been briefed. Um, I think they are begrudgingly okay. Um, I don't think that anyone, and I'm sure all of you understand this, no one, no one gets excited about a homeless shelter in his or her ward. Um, we all understand that residents um, feel strongly about having uh, homeless individuals next to them. Um, so yes, we have briefed both of those aldermen, but neither one of them are excited, sir, and I wouldn't want to try to fool anybody into thinking that they were. All right, so um, I see uh, that we have Alderman Sophia King. Um, her hand is up, even though she's not a committee member, since it's pertinent to her community, um, I'm gonna ask her to speak on this item. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Sophia King. Uh -huh. Can you hear me, Chairman? We can, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak and thank you, Commissioner. Um, so I, you know, this is, obviously um you know making sure that our most vulnerable population um is safe during these unprecedented times is important um you know so fourth ward is um, going to step up as others have you know to do their part uh you know we wanted to just make sure uh that the transition is smooth uh not just for uh the residents who are living in the congregate but for the residents who already live there as well um, i just want to you know ask um commissioner just so that my colleagues understand um you know while we were we are doing this kind of temporarily we don't understand how long temporary is uh because you know we all don't understand how long covid will be around um, but um, these numbers will probably go up, right, Commissioner, because of housing insecurities that will happen because of, you know, rent, foreclosures, and other things as well. You have a number 
um, that you guys are predicting um, in terms of of additional housing that we'll be needing? So, um, Alderman, there's a couple of, of you've made some really strong points. I'm going to try to tease them apart. So um, there are currently roughly 4,000 shelter beds that exist in the city of Chicago. DFSS funds 3,000 of those. One of the biggest shelters is Pacific Garden Mission, which is located right downtown in the center of downtown. They, are, they don't actually take government money. Um, and so you've got 3,000 beds that the city funds, 4,000 beds total. And even in last year's, in the 2019 a point in time count, I believe there were 53 or 5,400 homeless people. So we have never in Chicago had the correct amount of shelter beds. There has always been a gap. Um, and that exists for a couple of reasons. As we said, it's very hard to open up a new shelter um, for multiple reasons, and not all of it is political. I sure don't want it to feel like it's just residents. There also isn't necessarily money to go out and build them. And so, for instance, the money that comes through DFSS doesn't go for capital. It goes to pay people to reimburse them to operate them. So there is already a gap. And uh, so that's an important thing to recognize. When we moved those hundreds of beds, those were not new beds. We didn't add beds to the system. We simply decompressed to keep people safe. Um, and Alderman, you raise a really good point, and you and I've talked about this recently, and I've also talked to, uh, uh, Alderman Osterman uh, a lot about this as well. Um, the National Alliance to End Homelessness, um, Columbia University, um, the Urban Land Institute, I've seen three or four um, articles and studies recently that are forecasting that homelessness could grow by 45%, that's four or five, 45% in cities across America on the back end of COVID. Um, our colleagues at uh, U Labs, in Chicago have identified 106,000 households, uh, folks who were not only employed in the um, occupations that were hardest hit up front, our hospitality workers, um, our, our tourism industry workers, restaurant workers, et cetera, but those people are also already rent burdened, which means that 50% of their monthly income was going for rent. Right. And so on the back end, it is very, very difficult for us to forecast the exact number. But I, I mean, I, I think that that, that um, Columbia University study that talks about homelessness growing by 45%, that's, um, that's something that we've got on our radar screen. We have been very fortunate thus far um, that the city's efforts have really been, I think, pretty incredible, the, the, uh, the collaboration. So not only have we had a strong partnership with the Department of Public Health to make sure that we are um, embracing the health guidelines and uh, creating partnerships with um, FQHCs to try to bring better um, uh, supports to our, to our colleagues. We've also been talking a lot with uh, D Department of Housing and, um, and so there has been, as you all probably recall recently, we did a collective um, uh, fund that had, uh, I think 23 million from housing and DFSS also had 8 million and that was out there for rental assistance and mortgage assistance. So we are trying to make sure we see each other, but it is, it is sobering, Alderman, it is sobering. Yeah, and, and so um, Chairman, I just, you know, would like to say in, in closing that, you know, this, um, while we are stepping up and doing our part um, and, and doing, you know, helping with housing for the immediate congregate needs, there's going to be a larger issue, um, you know, that this pandemic uh, is going to hurl onto people who are already, you know, housing insecure. And as budget season, comes up, we've got some hard decisions to make, but you, you know, hear the numbers. So I just encourage my colleague to think about that and for everybody to really step up um, so that we can make sure that our city and that our most vulnerable population is taken care of. Um, so that's what I'd like to say. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman, and thank you for your leadership on this very important issue. Um, I have also heard from uh, Alderman Brookins um, that he uh, has no objection to this, but obviously uh, reiterates some of your concerns, uh, Alderman King. So uh, just for the benefit of our colleagues, both Alderman um, 
have uh, given their support on this critical issue. So uh, hats off to both of you. Um, before I ask uh, Alderman Lopez to go on, I see Chairman Osterman uh, is, has his hand up and obviously as chair of the housing committee, uh, you might want to uh, illuminate on this issue. Um, so uh, Chairman Osterman. Thank you, uh, Chairman Tunney. I think first I wanna really commend Commissioner Morrison Butler. I think we are incredibly fortunate uh, to have her and her role during this crisis. In, in addition to the many things that she does. Um, I think the reality of the, the matter before us is that it's, it's, it's an emergency. And I think that um, um, as someone who had um, a shelter that was opened up um, in the first phase of COVID, um, I think that her team was very professional to make sure that the issues on the ground uh, were caring for people and caring for residents in the community. I think the bigger issue that Alderman King and um, Commissioner Morris and Butler, Butler, I think is something that we as a council have to work on is that um, over the next year, um, the numbers of homeless in Chicago are gonna continue to grow. And before COVID, the shelter infrastructure was um, not strong. And, and I think we, as we get into the budget process, have to look to what the next year or two hold to make sure that um, we have a shelter system in place that can care for the people that are they're going to need it. And there's going to be lots of families and, and individuals that need our help. Um, and it's got to be spread out around the city of Chicago. So I think that's something that as we get into the budget and, and the Housing and Real Estate Committee, the Zoning Committee and others will really focus on to make sure that we are have that safety net that's in place um, moving forward. Thank you, Alderman. Um, Alderman Ray Lopez. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Commissioner. Um, I just wanted to ask, so I'm understanding this correctly, Commissioner, we are already at these two locations, correct? Yes, sir. So we are retroactively going backwards uh, for what purpose? Is this to, to, leg, to legitimize our presence for the sake of funding reimbursement or why are we going backwards as opposed to just focusing on moving forward? Because we so were I would have already, thought that the emergency powers because, ordinance would have covered us previously. So Alderman, I'm not really sure about the emergency powers piece. I apologize for not being the expert on that. Um, I do know that what we were trying to do was to make sure that the the ordinance covered our presence in these buildings. And so not only, cause like I said, we moved in. And by the way, that was one of the things that we did that, that um, actually caused some angst specifically for Alderman King. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to uh, make sure that the ordinance captures what we've actually done as well as what we intend to do. So we're in there. Uh, we, we moved out uh, and kind of did a, a transfer of locations um, a week or so ago and uh, and need to be in these locations uh, up and through March 1. The, the money that would so, pay for the alderman, uh, however, I do already have in my in my budget, these are part of my ESG dollars, my emergency solutions grant that comes to me from HUD. DFSS is the entity that receives ESG funding from HUD. And so as we get into this phase that we're talking about now, we are thinking that ESG funding is the funding stream that will reimburse us. In the first phase, where we did have some of the uh, coronavirus relief funds, then yes, like lots of other city departments, we are uh, trying to figure out whether or not we will be reimbursed for what we already did in the first phase. And if I may ask, Commissioner, what was the cost of both of these projects? Oh. For the build out and the reconstruction. Um, Alderman, I don't have that number with me. I apologize. I was on vacation last week. I will get that to you through Chairman Tunney. Because you raise a good point. Every time we switch locations, sir, we do have to do work in the building. And so, for example, we needed to put um, showers at um, uh, young women's. And so that was something that we had to do. When we went into Calumet, there was obviously uh, cleaning up uh, that had to be done and trash removal. And so anytime we move, 
Um, there's always work that goes into these buildings that gets them ready and habitable. So I'll, I'll get that those details to you through the chair, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Are there un, are there any other locations that are waiting in the wings that we have um, done work? Because I do remember the decompression discussions we had on Zoom, um, and I I do want to say that I applaud your efforts to try and keep our our homeless population safe. I know we we generally warehouse them, unfortunately, in many of these shelters, and trying to find a way to keep them safe through creative means has definitely been a challenge. And I commend you for your efforts. Are there other locations throughout the city that we have yet to hear about or that we need to start thinking about as well, um, similar to these two locations that will be on your decompression project list? So right now, the short answer is no, sir, there aren't any. What we did, and, and by the way, um, when we start talking about buildings and negotiating leases, then you're way beyond my skill set. So I will tell you that it has been a uh, very valuable to us to be able to partner with AIS. Uh, and AIS acted as kind of a lead on um, helping us scope out buildings. So AIS and CPS first came together, there was a short list that was drawn up, and then we would go into that list and talk about, so for example, there are still other CPS buildings, but some of them have now been vacant for so long that the cost associated with getting them ready was more than we wanted to spend. And so we went through a process like that that got us down to these two locations. Um, and so my understanding is right now, we don't have other locations that are on our short list. Um, that causes my team a little bit of flux because March 1st will be here before we know it. And we do not believe that we will be past the COVID emergency in March. So we think that, when, that we will need to find other buildings um, that we can then move into because the way the ordinance is written, we would be coming out of these on March 1. So then the duration of the lease is until March 1st for these two locations? Yes, sir. And okay. in these cases, Alderman, there is no lease, which is the good news. It's the ordinance would give us permission to stay there, but we're not paying rent, which is good because you pay for so many other things. You still have to staff them. You still have to provide food, uh, bedding, laundry services, et cetera. So there are other costs. And that's one of the reasons why we were eager to not pay leases in privately owned buildings because uh, we were looking for ways that we could reduce the cost of having to provide these decompressed uh, sites. Can you provide through the chair a list of the community partners that will be assisting us at these two locations as well? Or is this yes, all sir. handled in-house for all those facilities? Okay. No, it's not. Thank There's a, a, a number. So for instance, Open Kitchens is handling, uh, has the food contract with us because we already had a contract with them to do senior meals. So we will get you um, a, uh, a list of who's doing what. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Thank you, sir. Chairman, I have one other question. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's for the, uh, is Department of Public Health on this call this morning? Um, let, let me check. Do we have someone from health on this? Hi there. Megan Cunningham, Managing Deputy Commissioner from Public Health is on the line. Megan, um, I think Alderman Lopez has a question for you. Alderman Lopez. Is he, okay. Thank yeah. you, Chairman. Megan is uh, on from Good morning. Health. Yeah. Good morning, Megan. Um, I want to ask about the uh, uh, medical testing sites for the temporary COVID testing sites. Does this also give you authority only to run this through March 19th? Or would your ability as a department allow you naturally to create testing sites throughout the city should this continues as uh, Commissioner Morrison Butler just implied? Thank you. Thank you for that question. So Pursuant to section two of the ordinance, the commissioner of public health can have these medical testing sites in any zoning district when such testing sites are required to assist in responding to the emergency. And unlike section one, section two of the ordinance continues on until the commissioner of the Department of Public Health has made a written determination that the threat posed by COVID is over. So um, we really have a more open-ended authority here to respond to the emergency at hand and to determine if and when testing sites are no longer needed. 
that March 1st date does not apply for the, the testing facilities. It applies only to those decompression shelters that Commissioner Morrison Butler was speaking about. Understood, thank you. Do you think there's any value to in moving forward having, uh, whether it's quarterly or semi-annually, updates to the city council to determine if we are still in uh, comfortable with the language set forth in items like this so that it's not just some indeterminate never ending policy of the city moving forward sure yeah happy to have further discussions with the department of law iga and, and aldermen along these lines um, you know the department of public health reviews guidance from the cdc as well as the illinois department of public health along with our local data to make determinations about uh, the course of COVID here in Chicago and what sorts of emergency needs, um, you know, will help us to best be positioned to respond to protect the health of our residents. Um, but I think we can have some some ongoing discussion. My understanding is the commissioner does regular briefings with aldermen, both to provide information and to solicit input, um, you know, based on what you're hearing within your wards. I think those would, would surely continue, but if you have proposals for other formal ways in which we should engage, I'm, I'm happy to, to take those back and to discuss with IGA and others. Thank you, and, and Chairman, I, I can't remember the last time I had a briefing with the Commissioner of Public Health, but I think that rather than legislate their return every six months, uh, perhaps that's something that this committee or even uh, others could consider moving on in the future. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Maria Haddon. Thank you, Chair. Um, Commissioner Morrison Butler, um, and, and actually Alderman Osterman, you, you were speaking to this as well. Um, uh, thanks for being uh, before us today um, to speak to this issue. And thank you for sharing uh, and kind of reminding us again of still the, the great need um, and the gap that we have in, in the people that we serve and the people that still need served. Um, and I, I'm wondering, just while we have you here, um, you know, the, the shelter for decompression, the shelters for decompression, as you stated, um, you know, we're not really adding beds, we're decompressing, we're maintaining these facilities, um, given, you know, the information that you stated earlier, um, what Alderman Osman had to share as well, what Alderman King did. Um, what are uh, uh, plans, if any, on more permanent, long-term housing solutions um, for our neighbors experiencing homelessness? Uh, Alderman, one of the things that we were able to do during uh, the real height of, of COVID, let, let's say the first phase of COVID, was to pilot um, an expedited housing initiative that we did that the uh, Department of Public Health really was a close partner in. And so um, we did some shielding housing and then we did an expedited housing initiative. So the shielding housing was really focused on taking individuals who were 60 plus with underlying conditions and trying to move them out of um, the shelter system into the shielding housing. And so uh, because we had um, uh, coronavirus relief funding and we could do that sort of thing. We kept those individuals in hotel rooms um, and we, we are convinced that that strategy that um, that health really helped us pioneer that that helped us keep um, individuals who were already incredibly vulnerable even before COVID from getting sick. And that was really that was really something that we tried to do. A lot of these things, Alderman, are tied to the funding. So I think that when we had those dollars, we tried to maximize on those dollars. The shielding housing, I believe, has uh, has we've now sunset that particular uh, thing. And then we the expedited, expedited housing initiative was really then a uh, an effort between the city and the continuum of care to try to reduce the amount of time that it takes to get people into housing once you've got them assessed. Um, and so um, once again, able to use funding to do those kinds of things. So I think that we are trying to do everything we can to um, get the most vulnerable into housing. Um, to make it 
quicker for people to be put in housing. Um, and then even with the, the partnership that I mentioned between health and DFSS, where we were trying to put dollars out the door to take full advantage of that eviction moratorium and keep people in their homes as long as possible. Um, right now, I feel like we're spending an awful lot of plates. Um, I think that's fair. So, you know, not, not saying we're doing anything that any of you all aren't doing. Everybody's working overtime. Um, I am concerned about a surge. Um, and so I, uh, I've also been paying close attention to even things like the accessory dwelling units conversation. I just think that in Chicago, we have to do everything we can to try to make sure that there are um, uh, as many creative approaches as possible. And some of that includes trying to keep people from coming into housing, I mean, coming into homelessness, and then it includes trying to get people um, out. One of the things the mayor did recently is she wrote a letter to landlords asking landlords to sort of step up and identify themselves and let us know if they were willing to partner with us around any of these housing initiatives that would get homeless individuals housed quicker. So we need, we need housing and we need affordable housing. Otherwise, um, as I have said many, many times to you all individually, um, when you call me and you ask me to send somebody out because you've got an encampment in your ward, we come. But with, if I don't have any place to put people, what I'm doing is moving them from one side of the street to the other. And there's a point where that's just not effective. Okay, before we get into the, wait, before we get a further questioning from Alderman Haddon, I just wanna emphasize, we have 100 people on this call for zoning initiatives. There is a health committee and there's a housing committee where we could talk ad infinitum about the crisis that we're here. So I just wanna bring everyone's attention. I wanna keep as many members as I can on the zoning issue. For the benefit of the zoning members, this is not a zoning change. This is a temporary change of use at the, at the above sites. So I just wanted to uh, I keep you all on the line engaged, uh, but we're not gonna solve COVID this morning. So uh, Maria, you wanna ask your... Um, Question. Sure. I, I was only going to thank Commissioner Morrison Butler and Chairman. It's uh, <laughs> it is unfortunate um, as a member of, of of the Health and Human Relations Committee and also of Housing. Um, it's just they're such exciting topics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Commissioner, thank you. Uh, and, and I was just going to say. Um, um, it would be great. Um, I know um, my colleague, Alderman Lopez, mentioned um, uh, kind of more briefings. Um, I'll reach out directly, but it, it would be great to, to hear more as we as we enter this season um, into what you need. So thank you for being here and thank you, Chair. All right, Chairman Dowell. Yes, hey, uh, Chairman Tony. I just wanted to take the opportunity since I'm here and Commissioner Butler is here, just to thank you, Commissioner, for the very effective and quick response to a homeless person uh, that was in my ward this weekend uh, that, you know, was a real big issue. And your staff uh, working with the police department in the first district really took care of it in short order. So I just wanted to thank you while I had the opportunity. Thank you for indulging me, Chairman Muwan. Chairman Tani, I would think. <laughs> All right. If there are no further questions by committee members, do I hear a motion do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? So moved, Alderman Haddon. Alderman Haddon moves do pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Morrison Butler, for your continued dedication to our city and to our most vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Now we're going back. Uh, okay. Now we're going back to the first item on the addendum to the agenda. That's mayoral application two zero zero six amendment of the municipal code section seventeen thirteen zero six one zero regarding plan development ordinance review processes and fees. We have zoning administrator Patrick Murphy and Steve Valenciano from DPD here to testify in the matter and answer any questions. Patrick Murphy. Or, or Steve. 
Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Chairman. Okay, Patrick, you're on on the uh, uh, plan development review processes and fees. Uh, Noah, Noah Zafranik from UP is here. He's got a script and he's ready for the presentation. Sorry, sir. All right. Yes. Noah. Hello, can you guys hear me? Good morning, yes, everyone. Good morning, Identify Chairman. yourself for the record, please. Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, uh, Noah Safranik with the Department of Planning and Development. Um, I'm here today to give you a brief, uh, brief syn synopsis of this item before you today. Uh, as the Chairman mentioned, it's to amend Section 1713-0610 of the Chicago Zoning Ordinance, specifically as it pertains to the collection of plan development review fees. So some specific details for this uh, ordinance amendment. Uh, it's a proposal that affects projects citywide. The proposed changes would not affect the actual fee structure. All the required fees and payments remain as stated. The proposed change would only affect plan developments that are submitted to the department, which would include multiple phases of development in their proposal. And if multiple phases are included, would also require that those subsequent phases have a site plan approval requirement written in and attached to them in order to be eligible to defer the time of the payment. So uh, the previous rule as uh, put into the ordinance in January of 2020 of this year required uh, projects that come in for plan development when they apply to pay 50% of their plan development review fee upfront as part of their filing. As we moved on in the first few months, No, uh, sorry, as we moved on in the first few months uh, of the year, we started to see examples of development where uh, we saw that there could be potential hurdles to development and potential issues on uh, projects that had multiple different development teams involved with paying this fee up front. So we had just we had come up with this as an alternative method to keep development moving forward. And just to offer up a generic example of what would happen in these cases, uh, say we had a plan development with four phases of development, each having an equal uh, size of 100,000 square feet, cumulative total of 400,000 square feet. Under the old rule, someone coming in, or under the current rule, I should say, someone coming in uh, to file that application would have to have a $100,000 filing fee presented just to file their application. So in this current proposed alternative um, rule, the applicant coming in, if they only had their first phase of development design, they would have a fee at the time of filing of $25,000. And then each of the three phases, as they came back to the department for review and approval through site plan approval, would then pay the additional $25,000 at each of those three points in time. So the overall fee would remain as the $100,000 just stretched out over the life of the development rather than requiring it to all become upfront. And in the last few months, what was really striking is we had a plan development that is actually read as a deferred item today that would like to go to plan commission called West Haven. And they have an affordable housing development component that uh, leaves some actual development rights in the plan development for later. And they would have had to pay for all of those rights upfront. And you know the affordable housing developments are sometimes strapped for liquid, and in, the, in that scenario would make it very difficult for that project to get to, to the finish line. So that is one of the examples that uh, we have in front of you today as a practical example of what's holding what could hold development back. So with that, I am here uh, to answer any questions. I believe Patrick will also help me in answering those, and uh, Lucia, if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Um... I see uh, Vice Chair uh, Raboyas has a question. Ariel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Noah, for that presentation. Um, so my question is, does this fee, uh, is this fee to be paid prior or to them receiving their, their desired zoning for that particular project? So the, the way the rule is written today, it is part of their filing to request the zoning change to a plan development. Um, in the modified request, they would have to pay a portion of whatever they have ready to go and design. And then there are required administrative steps in PD to keep them coming back so that the fee, the, the overall fee ends up getting paid. It's just stretched out over a longer time. Okay, period. I like that. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. I do not see any other hands up for questions. 
Uh, if there's no further questions by committee members, do I hear a motion? Do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All Vice Chair Raboyas moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, uh, the item is passed. Thank you, Noah, and the department on that one. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. Moving on, we have large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade. We will hear them all together. I will read the ward followed by the address and take a motion at the end. In the first ward, 2585 North Elston Avenue. Also in the first ward, 2845 West Belden Avenue. In the 25th ward, three signs at 1135 South Delano Court. In the 27th ward, 1460 North Halsted Street. In the 27th ward, 2327 West Madison Street. In the 28th ward, 2415 West 19th Street. In the 39th Ward, 4025 West Peterson Avenue. In the 42nd Ward, 640 North Wells. In the 42nd Ward, 311 West Monroe. Also in the 42nd Ward, two signs at 110 North Wacker. In the 42nd Ward, two signs at 405 North Wabash. And also in the 42nd Ward, three signs at 35 North State. In the 44th Ward, 3032 North Clark Street. In the 47th Ward, 2500 West Bradley Place. And finally, in the 47th Ward, 1801 West Argyle. Questions by committee members? Hearing none, do I have a motion to pass for these items by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? Alderman Lopez so moves, Chairman. Alderman Lopez moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, uh, these items are passed. All right. Now, as a, uh, as a, as a benefit, I should say, we're gonna go out of order. Uh, for Alderman Scott and a number of witnesses that were on the call. For those of you following along on the reformatted agenda, it is in the middle of page 10, file number 20406. If you are looking at the traditional deferred agenda, you can find it on page 13. All right, so let me read for the record uh, item number. 20406 24th Ward ordinance was referred on May 20th of 2020. Common address 1111 through 1141 South Holman Avenue, 1134 through 1142 South Kedzie Avenue, 3300 to 3303 West Fillmore Street, and 3200 through 3340 West Roosevelt Road. Change request. Business plan development number 177 to business plan development 177 as amended. Um, we have our attorney, uh, Graham Grady. Uh, Graham, I'm gonna tell you up front, uh, we got a long agenda and I know you can be uh, wordy at times. So uh, let's uh, let's get to the point. I believe this is a very exciting project for Alderman Scott. We wanna give him more time than you, okay? so. Graham. Man, that was short. Uh, I'm sorry, Chairman, I, I don't have Graham on the call. I have Sylvia Micus from Taft, and there may be some others uh, on this well, list. Well, let's go with Sylvia. Uh, let's I, let's make sure that she, she can speak can on it. in? Sylvia. Can you hear me? I don't Sylvia know. If, oh. My, Sylvia Micus, we're here to talk about the North Lawndale project. As I said to Graham, and I'm going to tell you, uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, items on the agenda today, and I know this is a very exciting project for Alderman Scott. We want to hear from him more than we want to hear from you. Okay, so proceed. 
Uh, good morning, members of the committee. Um, I'm here today on behalf of North Lawndale Employment Network. With me today are Brenda Palms Barber, Executive Director from North Lawndale, and also Larry Kearns, the principal with Wheeler Kearns Architects. Um, first, we'd like to thank Alderman Scott and the staff of the Department of Planning and Development and all that have uh, contributed to this project. Um, first, I would like to request the record from the August 20th Plan Commission hearing to be entered into the Committee on Zoning Record. Um, just going very quickly. Uh, in Let me terms do that. <laughs> Alderman Raboyas moves to incorporate the records from the Plan Commission by the same roll call that was used to determ determine quorum. Any objections? So move. Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Proceed, Sylvia. The subject property is located at 111 South Homan. It will become the new home of the North Lawndale Employment Network and its subsidiary Sweet Beginnings LLC. That's 48,000 square foot property was purchased by NLEN last May and is located in the North Lawndale community. This project is located within an area identified by the city under the Invest Southwest Community Reinvestment Initiative. We have been approved or NLN has been approved for a $2.5 million NOF grant. The application calls for amending PD-177 in order to add the following uses. Outdoor urban farm, yeah, rooftop yeah. operation, processing and packaging of honey material generated at and brought to the site from offsite apiaries, a community center, which will be named in honor of Michael Scott Senior Community Room and a drive-through banking facility facilitated uh, and operated by wind trust. Uh, in terms, as you can see here, the PD boundaries, we are bounded by obviously um, Kenzie in the north, and then we have Homan on the south, Fillmore on the west, and um, Roosevelt on the east. This is a very large PD. We are a small part of that, obviously, as you can see on the attached map. Uh, the current zoning is PD 177. We are proposing to rezone to PD 177 as amended. Uh, just to give a little bit of a uh, quick background about what is contained in the PD itself, if we could switch to the land use contacts plan, please. Um, obviously, our property is vacant. It is an existing two-story building. It is the former home of Liberty Bank. Also, there is a McDonald's, a Leamington Foods, Comcast facility, all within this PD. Switching over to the site uh, to the site plan um, review. That is our overall site. And then the next slide is the proposed site and landscaping plan, where you can see where uh, landscaping features will be uh, will be added. Uh, moving on to actually the Worker Bee Cafe. This is one of the highlights of this uh, proposed development. This is the Worker Bee Cafe, which will be uh, managed and operated by Sweet Beginnings, one of the very important job training programs um, of North Lawndale Employment Network. Uh, moving on to the next slide is the Peace Garden slide. Next slide, please, thank you. This is an area where everyone can go uh, in terms of the employees, et cetera, and enjoy a nice uh, honey-infused cup of tea uh, to enjoy outside. This is directly off of the Michael Scott Senior Community, uh, Community Center. Uh, moving on to the next slide, first floor plan. Um, I think you will see the tenant space where Wind Trust will operate, also the core of NLEN's operations. Moving on to the next slide, this is our prep kitchen. This is where Sweet Beginnings will work on um, processing the honey into from the apiaries, which will be located, located on top on the roof top of the uh, building, as well as been brought in off site to make the um, wonderful honey infused products and also the skincare products, which are sold underneath the Be Love brand. Again, this is yet another uh, one of the job training uh, programs that NLEN has. Uh, moving on to the um, this is the community room, again, uh, named in honor of Michael Scott Jr. And going to the next slide, please. Second floor plan. This is primarily uh, administrative offices for NLEN, um, some conference center, job training um, areas, et cetera. 
moving on to the next plan, please. The roof plan, obviously showing our rooftop apiary, which will contain five beehives. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, in terms of summarizing the community meeting process, we had dates of the community meetings in January of 2019 and, Jan and also uh, January of 2020. Unanimous community support. Next slide, please. This is kind of our crowning jewel here. Um, in terms of MBEWB compliance, we are, our NLEN is uh, already on the books, has 46% per, uh, percent participation from MBE, 9% from WBE, um, 71 permanent jobs, 105 construction jobs, and a $6.5 million project budget. Uh, the project ti uh, timeline, basically construction has begun. Um, at this point, if we have time, Chairman Tunney, um, I don't know if we do, but I would like uh, just a very short, short statement from Brenda Palms Barber, who again is the executive director and is, is the heart and soul of, of NLEN, if we have a few moments. Okay. Uh, we will let Brenda on, but just like the other public speaker, three minutes. Brenda for three minutes. Thank, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I will, I'll probably be less than that. What I want to say is that this workforce campus is going to reduce the unemployment rate in North Lawndale by 10% by 2023. And so you may think that's a bold goal, but right now these times require bold action. We are, uh, it's enough for us to have a low, un a high unemployment rate in North Lawndale to begin with, but truly you know that through the conversations you've had, that this pandemic has truly revealed to us the, the, the level of vulnerability and the need for new jobs and opportunities for prosperity in our community. So this campus represents hope, but it's also an economic engine. We're excited about inviting you to come out and have a cup of worker bee honey infused lattes with us. Um, we could not do this work without the support and visionary leadership of our alderman, Michael Scott. We are thrilled and honored to recognize his father for the services that he provided, not just North Lawndale, but really the entire city of Chicago. So we also, as we mentioned, will be able to increase our visibility as an organization um, because we're currently in five different locations and now the community will know where we are and how to receive those support services. We'll Will increase our employment, our employees from 55 to 71. Um, and we'll all be able to serve um, basically double the number of people that we serve currently. So that means moving from 2,000 people to 5,000 people. We are excited to be the premier workforce development organization in North Lawndale to move people, um, not just, just from hope to reality in terms of their own self uh, sufficiency and our self worth as a neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Um, and as a member of the plan commission, um, I was very impressed with the whole team and mm. uh, the work that you're doing in West uh, Lawndale or North Lawndale. I'm going to ask uh, Alderman Scott, since it's in your ward. Alderman Scott. Thank you. Oh, Thank I'm you, sorry. Chair. I'm sorry. Let me let me go back. Uh, Sylvia, are you finished with your presentation? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chairman Tunney. Okay, want to make sure that. Okay, Alderman Michael Scott. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you, members of the committee. Uh, it is a, a, a privilege and an honor to, to be able to support an organization uh, like North Lawndale Employment Network. Uh, you heard from uh, Brenda Palms Barber, who I consider a partner in the good work that we're doing in North Lawndale. Um, like she mentioned they're in five locations doing the good work currently uh, to, to bring all of, of the organization's members and, and all of the work that they're doing uh, under one central location in the heart of North Lawndale uh, I think just exponentially uh, increases the work that they're going to be able to do. Uh, Brenda often talks about Incre decreasing uh, the employment rate by 10% in North Lawndale. Uh, and I often tease her um, that she's going to do more than that. She's going to be about 15% because of the hard work that she does and, and the, the excellent staff that she has. Um, you've heard from members of my community who talked about 
uh, how the, the support is overwhelming for uh, this organization. Uh, and, and that is because they walk the walk and they, they, they talk the talk and they walk the walk. Um, again, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to support them. And I ask uh, the members of the com committee to be supportive of this as well. Uh, it is going to be a great thing for North Lawndale. It is going to reduce um, the, the unemployment rate, it's going to reduce recidivism, uh, and it's going to give us a, a great place to hang out and, and drink honey-infused lattes and coffees and teas. And, and again, I ask for the support of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Michael. Um, first up, uh, Alderman Ray Lopez. Questions or comments uh, for the project? Thank, uh, thank you, Chairman. And first and foremost, congratulations to our colleague, Alderman Michael Scott, and to the uh, North Lawndale community on this wonderful addition to the neighborhood. I just had one question with regards to the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. Um, I believe it was said that it's a $2.5 million uh, grant that is being awarded. Um, Alderman and or Chairman, do we know if the appropriate council committees has already voted on uh, awarding of this grant or is that something that will be coming up as well? Can I speak to that, Chair? Alderman Michael Scott, on the question. Uh, Thank, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Lopez. This is, uh, they, they applied for a Neighborhood Opportunity Fund uh, in the last administration. Uh, they were awarded earlier this year, so it is not something that needs to come back before council. Uh, it has already been uh, approved. Uh, again, the, the it, I think it is very fortuitous that the last uh, administration and this administration saw the good work that North Lawndale Employment Network does and will continue to do in North Lawndale and, and uh, was fortunate enough to award that grant to, to the, the community organization. Alderman Lopez. Okay, thank you, Chairman. I, I was just under the impression that uh, grants of a certain size had to be voted on. Um, but if the money has already been no, guaranteed it, it was, and the checks it, been I'm written, sorry. then all no, the it was it, it was voted on already, Alderman. It, it came before council um, oh. earlier this year. It, it was voted on. It was not something that um, was cashed, and it was voted on already. So um, I can't remember exactly, but it was earlier this year, maybe the end of last year. I can't remember exactly, but um, it has, it has been, been it has been voted on by the Finance Committee. That answers the yes. question, right? Okay, great. All right, next, uh, Vice Chair Raboyas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you, and I'm very impressed with this beautiful yes. project. Alderman um, Scott, I forward. just wanted to. Hello, sorry. Still there? Alderman Raboyas. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. I want to congratulate the North Lawndale Employment Network, and, and in particular, I want to commend uh, Alderman Michael Scott for, for not only this, this exciting project, but to name it after someone who I worked with, someone who cared about his community, cared about the city as a whole. I think it's a wonderful project, and I congratulate you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Alderman um, Michael Rodriguez. Mike. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to, to uh, see this project being presented today. I want to congratulate our colleague, uh, Alderman Scott, for the hard work on this. To Brenda Palms Barber, someone that I have the extensive pleasure of partnering with and working with in a previous life, and um, uh, who I stood on 26th Street with not uh, too long ago, um, you know, speaking to the efforts of building bridges between communities, most notably the Little Village community and the North Londo community. I want to congratulate you both on this effort. Um, you know, my community will benefit from this effort as well. I am, I am certain of it. And I wanted to uh, congratulate you once again. Thank you, Chairman, for the time. Alderman Pat Dow. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to uh, congratulate uh, Alderman Scott, um, it's great to see this old bank building come back to life. Uh, certainly will add some life in to, uh, to the area. I wanted to also congratulate Brenda. Um, I just, I'm amazed at how you have uh, built this um, organization and, and uh, this work 
from the little white uh, bee box that used to sit by the embankment to a full-fledged uh, industry. Uh, so congratulations. And again, Alderman Scott, congratulations on making this happen. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Kerry Austin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I too want to uh, congratulate uh, Alderman Scott, but ad additionally to congratulate you on the naming of the uh, building in honor of your father, of someone that have dedicated his life to the city of Chicago and especially to Lawndale. But for this to come to fruition after such a long time of North Lawndale not receiving any benefits from the city, this is something that you can be proud of for eternity. Congratulations, Alma Scott. All right. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Alderman. Um, all right, I don't see any other hands up. Um, uh, Alderman Michael Scott, you know how I feel about um, your father and his commitment to the city. Um, and I think it's um, fitting um, in the naming opportunity for North Lawndale to come back uh, under your leadership as the Alderman there. Um, so. If there are no more questions by committee members. Do I hear a motion? Do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine. Oh, so move. So move. So move. Alderman Beal moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed as revised. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Thank you so much. All right. Now, now we're going to page three on the uh, agenda in the 40s well it's good it's in the 47th ward uh document number 20459 t1 47th ward ordinance was referred on july 22nd of 2020 common address 3419 through 3421 north palina street change request b12 neighborhood shopping district and rs3 residential single unit detached house district to a b23 Neighborhood Mixed Use District. Um, we have Sarah Barnes as the attorney on this uh, application. Sarah? Hello, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, for the record, my name is Sarah Barnes and I'm an attorney with the losses of Sam Banks, located at 221 North LaSalle Street. I'm happy to be here this morning on behalf of the applicant, Polina Flats, LLC, who owns the subject property. Um, the subject property is currently split zoned between a residential and a business zoning classification because it does it is comprised of two contiguous zoning lots. The applicant is seeking to redevelop the site in its entirety with a new four story all residential multi unit building that will contain a total of 14 dwelling units between the first through fourth floors. Um, there is a nice mix of sizes for those dwelling units. They range from size um, studio up to two bedroom units. And we have been working very closely with Alderman Martin, as well as the 47th Ward Zoning Advisory Committee towards actually providing additional affordable units above and beyond the 10% that is required under the Affordable Requirements Ordinance. That has all been memorialized by and through Alderman Martin's office. Um, as well, and towards those same ends, the subject property is located directly across the street from the CTA Brown Line entrance. And as a result, this site qualifies and meets the very definition of a transit serve location. So in order to mitigate congestion in the area, vehicular congestion, we are limiting the parking or asking for a reduction in the parking down from 14 parking spaces down to four. Um, this particular developer actually has a very similar building on Damon Avenue and they have not utilized any of their parking and they have the same parking ratio. So we do believe that that is um, going to be consistent at this site. We've met again with Alderman Martin, the 47th Ward Zoning Advisory Committee, as well as the Lakeview Chamber of Commerce to present this plan. And 
as of today, we do have the support of all of the organizations, as well as Alderman Martin, who I believe Mr. Chairman tendered a copy of a letter of support to your office. Uh, we do have a letter of support from Alderman Martin, but my understanding is there's a, uh, is there a substitute? Just getting there. I'm sorry. I should have led with that. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, in voting on this proposal, we did tender a substitute narrative along with a substitute um, set of plans to the Department of Planning and Development. So we would ask that those get incorporated into the record here today and any votes be taken in consideration of the same. So move, so move on to substitute, ma'am. All Chairman. right, Alderman Raboyas moves to accept the substantive narrative and plans for the type one application by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections to that? Hearing none, the substantive narrative and plans are accepted. Uh, Sarah, are, is your testimony complete now? It is. I'm happy to answer questions, though. Yep. So I want, I don't see any hands up from committee members. So in the hearing, no uh, questions, can I get a motion to move to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? Alderman so Dowell moves to pass. Alderman, Alderman Dowell moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed as, re, as revised. Uh, I'm sorry, item is passed with the substantive narrative and plans. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I think I have the next one. All right, then we will announce the next item and that is number 20456, 47th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. The common address, 2445 West Pensacola Avenue. And the change request, RS3 residential single unit detached house district to an RM 4.5 residential multi-unit district. Sarah, would you proceed? Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. And once more, members of the committee, um, for the record, once more, my name is Sarah Barnes. I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Sam Banks, located at 221 North LaSalle Street. Happy to be here this morning on behalf of the applicants, Jeffrey and Jennifer Delgren. The Delgrens own the subject property, which is currently improved with a two and a half story or a two story with a garden basement, which means the basement is actually more than 50% above grade. Um, all residential building, the building presently contains a total of three dwelling units, all of which are occupied by um, either young couples or starter families, including the Delgrens who live in one of the units with their new son. Um, the Delgrens have lived at this particular property for over 20 years. And instead of growing their property, or sorry, growing their family in um, a larger home or move, having to move out to the suburbs, they are seeking to actually rehabilitate and renovate the existing three unit building, which is non-conforming under the current zoning ordinance. And their proposal calls for a rear addition. What that will allow is for the Delgrans to add a bathroom as well as an office and or additional bedroom to each of the units because as I mentioned, all of the units are currently occupied by families that live within the 47th Ward in light of the current COVID um, limitations and life altering changes that we've all had to make as a result of the same. Um, the Dahlgrens both work from home and as well are having to homeschool their child as well as the additional, the other families in the building. So again, as a result of those conditions and just in order to um, maintain the building and also allow families another option when they are kind of cost prohibited from buying a single family home within this same ward, they, uh, the proposal calls for that rear addition in order to permit the construction of the rear addition. However, we do need to bring the building in its entirety into compliance under the current zoning ordinance, which requires the proposed underlying zoning change. So we have met with um, the, again, Alderman Martin, the 47th Ward Advi Zoning Advisory Committee, as well as the Near North Neighbors Association to present the proposal all of whom, again, are in support of the programming as you have before you here today. So with that, we very respectfully request the support and approval of the committee. Okay, do we have any questions from committee members? 
Hearing none, do I get a motion do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? Alderman Austin moves do pass. Alderman Austin moves do pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you, Sarah. Um, now we're on the top of page four, also in the 47th Ward, document number 20455-T1. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address is 4010, that's 4010 North Lincoln Avenue. The change request, a B11 neighborhood shopping district to a B33 community shopping district. Tom Moore is the attorney on this case, Mr. Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Uh, this is a project that's uh, gone through extensive community process in the 47th Ward. Uh, it is a TOD project. It has uh, 16 dwelling units and eight efficiencies. Um, and uh, the, uh, the ordinance would require two uh, affordables, but through the community process, they've added another two, which are documented through the uh, local ward. So there's a total of four on-site uh, um, on uh, affordable units, and uh, there'll be 11 on-site uh, parking stalls. Um, we, uh, as I say, there were repeated articles in the uh, repeated meetings with the um, both the community and the war, the alderman, and uh, we have the support of Alderman Martin, and we request your support as well. We do have a letter of support from Alderman Martin. Questions by committee members? Okay. Uh, no hands are up. So can I get a motion to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? So moved, Alderman Cardona. Alderman, Alderman Cardona moves uh, do pass. Any objections? Hearing none, and the item is passed. Uh, now we'll move to the middle of page four. Number 20453, 27th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd, 2020. Common address, 1446 West Huron Street. Uh, the change request from an RT 3.5 residential two flat townhouse and multi unit district, an RT 4 residential two flat townhouse and multi unit district. Again, we have uh, Tom Moore as the attorney. Mr. Moore? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a um, single family home. Um, we had uh, um, a community Zoom meeting where the alderman had us send out a notice to 500 feet around. Uh, we had a lot of support and no objections. Uh, Alderman uh, Burnett participated in the meeting and asked the uh, participants questions. And as I say, there was uh, uh, support for it. This is a, a family that um, where the um, husband, um, uh, where the couple has had two children recently and um, the um, gentleman has moved his mother from war torn uh, from a war torn country in the Middle East, and uh, they needed the extra two rooms on top of the uh, building. And in order to do that, we needed to go up a half a point uh, from a three five to a four. And um, as I say, we have both the community and the alderman support, and we'd request your support as well. Thank you. Um, I know um, Alderman Burnett uh, is on the call. Alderman Burnett, on the, on the item, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. So as the counselor said, they did go to the local community organization, which in this case, if I'm not mistaken, is the Eckhart Park Community Council. Uh, Eckhart Park Community Council approved this. Uh, we did have a Zoom community meeting. Uh, all it is is an existing neighbor trying to get more space so they can stay in the community. Um, everyone that was on the Zoom meeting supported. I supported, I asked for the committee support. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Any questions for the Alderman or uh, 
the applicant or the attorneys for the applicant. Hearing none, can I get a motion? Uh, move to pass. I'll move. move. Alderman yes, Cardona. Alderman Raboyas uh, moves to pass uh, by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Uh, do we have any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. All right, now we're document number, bottom of page four, document number 20449, 19th ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 2737. West 111th Street and the change request, a B11 neighborhood shopping district to a C22 motor vehicle related commercial district. Again, we have Mr. Moore uh, to speak on the application. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, this is a, a vacant uh, former um, kind of industrial property um, out on 111th Street. It's been vacant for some time. Um, Mr. Uh, the applicant, um, Dan uh, Pappas and his company uh, seek to put their, their fence company there and also uh, have a, um, a uh, another use in the front and in order to have both uses and to allow them to uh, have the a storage yard for the uh, fence company um, they need the C2 zoning. We had, we uh, went to the 19th Ward Zoning Committee and had their support. We also sent out notice to everyone within a certain distance. And we had um, a number of follow-up uh, conversations with the immediate neighbors and the applicant um, uh, talked to each of them individually to uh, make promises as to how we will run his uh, operation and uh, we at this point we're aware of no objections we have supported both the community and the alderman and we'd request your support as well so we do have a letter of support from alderman matt o'shea questions uh for the applicant no questions do i have a do i hear a motion to move to pass by the same roll call to determine quorum move to pass alderman Alderman Wagesback moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. All right. Uh, Next page. Okay. Now, again, uh, with, we're going to move to the top of page five, document number 20073T1, second ward. Ordinance was referred on July 24th of 19. Common address 1162 North Milwaukee Avenue and the change request B32 Community Shopping District to a B23 Neighborhood Mixed Use District. Uh, Mr. Moore, you get around town. You're in the second ward now. Uh, you want to proceed on this application? Yes, please. But may we first, uh, we went through uh, extensive changes on it and there is a substitute ordinance. May we uh, move the substitute ordinance so we can move forward on that? Uh, let, me uh, let me check the department. department. Patrick or Steve? Yeah, we have no change. Let me check with Anna and I'll get back to you during his testimony, Karen. All right. In that case, would you uh, want to pass it towards the end of the call and we could come back to it? Um, yeah, why don't we hold it? Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, as soon as we hear from the department, we'll get back to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So we're holding on that item in the second ward, and we're now moving to document number 20460 in the 27th ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 918 North Drake Avenue, and the change request. An RS3 residential single unit detached house district to an RT4 residential two flat townhouse and multi unit district. Uh, and we have, is it Max Kling um, on the line? Max? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Max Kling, uh, last name K-L-I-N-G, on behalf of Ab Abraham Serpa, who is the property owner at 918 North Drake Avenue here in Chicago. Um, we've submitted an application to uh, propose a zoning change from RS3, um, which is the current zoning of the property, to RT4. Um, and the purpose of the rezoning is to uh, comply with the proposed conversion from a residential two flat to three dwelling units by adding a garden unit. Um, and uh, the applicant and myself have met with, uh, with Alderman Burnett, um, who has expressed his uh, support for the project. And the applicant has also received a letter from uh, the West Humboldt Park Development Council um, expressing their consent and approval for this project. Thank you, Max. Um, Alderman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, Abraham is a long-term resident in the community, uh, one of our Latino residents, even though his name is Abraham. <laughs> and he, uh, he, um, he just wants to utilize the basement in his building. Uh, this kind of falls similar in line to what we're talking about with the new ordinance that we're proposing. Uh, he has to come and get a whole zoning change in order for this to happen, to hire lawyers, to do all these things, just to utilize his basement and his building. Uh, he did meet with the West Humble Park Development Council. He got their support. We had a community meeting. Um, I support it. Uh, I asked for the committee support also. Questions by committee members? Do I hear a motion to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? Hopkins moves to pass. Alderman Hopkins uh, moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. All right, we're going to stay on the page and move back to the second ward uh, with Mr. Moore. Uh, can we have Mr. Moore on the line for the document number 20073T1, the ordinance referred on July 24th of 19, the one at 1162 North Milwaukee Avenue? Mr. Moore. He's just um, okay. We do. We do uh, have the substitute. So let me let me read it into the record now. This is for, yeah. There's a substitute ordinance in. There'll be there'll be two motions on this one. Um, Alderman Raboyas moves to accept the substitute by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. So move. Any objections? Hearing none, the substitute is accepted. And then uh, the second is a motion to accept the substantive narrative and plans for the type one application by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Can I get a, can I get a motion on that one? Uh, Alderman Hopkins. Alderman, Alderman Hopkins uh, uh, moves on that one. Uh, any objections to that? Hearing none, the substantive narrative and plans are accepted. Uh, okay, Mr. Moore, we thank have you. we have all the substitutes we need. Let's go. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks for straightening that out. Uh, this is a request to move uh, to, uh, to change the zoning from a B32 to a B23. It is within uh, a very close distance, a couple hundred feet to the uh, L stop. And uh, it's been a vacant lot for a long time. Um, the uh, with Alderman uh, Hopkins' uh, support, uh, we were able to uh, do a vacation and take part of a very large sidewalk that was there uh, to increase the viability of the site. And uh, as a result, we now are asking uh, to build um, uh, for six efficiency units and eight dwelling units on this site. And there will be uh, two affordable units on site. Um, and we have both the support of the community and the alderman and we'd request your support as well. Alderman Hopkins, you wanna comment on this one? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have a letter of support on file. Uh, this matter was subject to an extensive community review. Uh, we received a number of favorable comments, including a letter of support from the community 
uh, Neighborhood Association of Record. Uh, so we would request support for this item. Uh, it is a TOD development, uh, and it will help with the economic development in the community. And I would urge a favorable uh, vote on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. We do. We have received your letter of support. We also know how much work you put into this, so appreciate the commentary. All right. So uh, questions by the Alderman or the attorney? Okay. Uh, hearing none, do I have a motion to move to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? Do pass, Alderman Cardona. Alderman Cardona moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed as substituted and with the substitute, uh, substitute narrative and plans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Passed. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we. Bottom of page five, document number 20437, 27th Ward, ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address, 200 through 208 West Chicago Avenue, 800 to 800 to 820 North Wells Street, 201 to 209 West Institute Place. Change request, residential business plan development number 1303 to DX7, and then to residential business plan development number 1303 as amended. Uh, we have Michael Esger on the call on this one, Michael. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Michael Esger on behalf of the applicant 808 uh, North Wells Devco LLC. And we are, uh, as a preliminary matter, we went to the plan commission on August 20th where the project was unanimously uh, supported and we wanted to incorporate the record of those proceedings into this hearing today. Alderman uh, Raboyas moves to incorporate the records from the plan commission by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Any objections to that? Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Uh, Michael? Continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so. This is a technical amendment to allow hotel as a permitted use within the already approved uh, approximately one year ago uh, project. We're looking at a rendering from last year's uh, plan commission. And again, this is a, uh, these are renderings looking uh, south on Wells Street at Chicago Avenue. The previous one was looking north uh, from Chicago and Wells. This is a 318 unit uh, apartment building and the request was to add 44 hotel units uh, and to the extent that those units are added in the future uh, that would reduce the uh, one for one the uh, residential units uh, affordable stays the same the previous commitments on mbe local hiring all stay the same and you're looking at the approved site plan which uh, went through quite a bit of work with the community and then up uh, CDOT uh, and the Alderman. Uh, we have support for this uh, request and Alderman Burnett is on the line to comment. Alderman Walter Burnett. This is for the benefit of the committee members. Uh, this is uh, not, uh, this in the public testimony. This is a different uh, hotel on Wells. Uh, this is south at Chicago. The other one is at North and Wells. So just wanted to clarify that for the committee members. Thank you. Walter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, so as the councilor said, this is a previous plan development that was approved uh, by the, by the uh, community in the Ninoff Unity Program, which is a local community organization in coordination with uh, several other community organizations uh, in the area. Uh, they came back to change it to uh, add, allow for some of the hotel rooms to be used uh, inside the building. Um, they're going to keep, uh, which is great about this and with the community like, is they still are going to keep the same amount of affordable housing uh, in the building, even though they're building less units of housing. Uh, they're adding hotels to it. Uh, the Ninoff Unity Program was uh, happy about that uh, at the community meeting. Of course, I like that. Um, so the community support this uh, proposed development. I support it and I ask for the committee support. 
Thank you. Questions for the applicant or Walter Burnett, Alderman Burnett. So move. Alderman uh, Raboyas uh, makes a motion move uh, due pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Hearing none, uh, this item is passed as revised. Thank you. Now, for the benefit of the committee members, we are now moving on to item number 20436, 27th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. This common address is 1520 through 1532 North Wells and 1513 through 1525 North Wheeland. Change request. Plan development 1335 and RM5, residential multi-unit district, to plan development 1335 as amended. Um, and again, for the benefit of the committee members, this we had a, probably three or four um, public comments on this uh, not in support. So we'll... Uh, it was also stuck. And I think you had the... Uh, some of the objections in your packets uh, that was distrib distributed to the committee. Uh, there was a petition, I believe, of 600, which was from a number of years ago, mm -hmm. that were opposed to it from the beginning. And th those were in 2016? 2015 and 16. 2015 and 16. And then we had 30, I believe, additional emails, uh, emails uh, uh, currently uh, as the design changes to this project. Um, so with that being said, uh, we have Katrina McGuire um, as the attorney for the applicant. Good afternoon, Chairman Tunney, members of the committee. Uh, Katrina McGuire here from Thompson Coburn on behalf of the applicant, Wells Tell LLC. Um, we have members of the development um, team uh, with us here today too. I'll go through a brief introduction um, and in light of the hour, um, I'll leave it at that. But of course, we're all available to answer any and all questions that you might have. Um, this matter was heard by the Plain Commission on August 20th, 2020, and so therefore we would ask that the, the record of those proceedings be incorporated here today. Okay. So um, Alderman Cardona moves to incorporate the records from the Plain Commission by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Thank uh, you. Katrina, before you proceed, just for the benefit of the committee members, um, you know what we are this application um, is not is a change to the plan development uh, that fundamentally has issues with the parking pad or the uh, the change so i think what we're discussing today is an amendment to that pd uh the the size and uh, basic structure of the, of the hotel was approved in 2016 if i'm not correct that's correct, Mr. Chairman. That's exactly right. The original PD was approved back in June 2016 with a 150 foot tall hotel. Um, the hotel as presented here today is still a 150 foot tall hotel. Um, that, that initial PD included four single family homes along Wheeland. And at that time, a unique parking configuration was contemplated whereby there were no curb cuts on Wheeland and the single family homes that fronted Wheeland were going to access their parking uh, essentially from wells underneath the hotel, um, um, which ultimately was found to not work. Uh, we then I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted, and you can make your presentation, but I just wanted to know what we are actually voting on today. It is an amendment to the PD uh, to change essentially the site plan of the plan development. Um, and I believe it's the next uh, exhibit, you'll see the comparison really of the two plans. The footprint of the hotel, um, and then the single family homes to the rear. Uh, we've also added an additional lot to the north on Wheeland that's been incorporated as part of the plan development, which will be developed as a single family home. There will be now two single family homes along Wheeland versus the four, um, and the parking um, for the hotel is now, no, now no longer underground. It is in a parking garage to the rear of the hotel. Um, the, there have been some design enhancements to the hotel. The room count did increase from 190 to 203, but it is still a 150 foot, 151 foot tall hotel. 
uh, that fronts um, on Wells and is only accessed from Wells. There is no hotel access from Wheeland at all. That, okay, so just for the edification of the committee members, um, the, the uh, proposals you're seeing are from Wheeland and we see the three or four homes, whatever that number is, um, that, um, that seem to me from the plan commission, uh, other than their shorter lots, seem to be consistent with what the uh, single family home um, environment is on Wheeland. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. That as approved is on your right side of your screen and, and on the left is, is what's proposed here today, which is the flip two homes, um, but they will still be fronting on Wheeland. Continue, Katrina. Continue. Mm -hmm. That's all we have for the presentation, but we're happy to answer any questions. All right, um, let's hear from Alderman Burnett and then we'll open up for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. You got to excuse me. I'm on another Zoom meeting. <laughs> this, uh, this stuff is crazy with the Black Caucus. That's probably why most of the Black Caucus is not at your meeting because we on the meetings talking about cannabis stuff. But anyway, um, Mr. Chairman. No samples at that meeting, right? No, not at all. Mr. All right. Chairman, this is, this is one of my unique uh, communities. I have a lot of great people here. You know, I've been, uh, I grew up near this area and worked this area for over 25 years. Uh, for 25 years, uh, I, I worked with people to help uh, increase the value of this community. At one, one time, uh, Old Town was not that great of a place. Uh, they didn't have the 1 million, 2 million, 3 million or more houses uh, in this community. Right. Um, so, you know, so now I find myself in the middle of uh, uh, in the middle of people with a lot of money who don't like each other <laughs> at these meetings, uh, which is unique, uh, but it's all right. Um, so initially we had a meeting uh, about the hotel in 2016. We did have a meeting in 2016 and people did disapprove the hotel in 2016. And I made the developer go back to the table. And, and go back to the drawing board and then come back and then it got approved, but nobody wanted to mention that. Uh, and then we had a meeting for this proposed revision. And we had a meeting for this proposed revision. I had a whole bunch of people at this meeting, most of which did not live in the community. Uh, people who was against it went and got folks from their kids' schools to come and all types of people to come to the meeting to object with them. And I felt like I was being game banged on and, and they, they humili humiliated me so bad, which was terrible and, and accused me of going to approve it anyway. And I made the developer go back to the table and I literally made the developer go back to the table and go back to the community and work on a development. And from that, the developer went and changed some things. He actually offered to put a park there, right? He offered to put a park where the houses was. And, you know, some folks didn't want the park. Um, some folks uh, that was on the, on the uh, call earlier are concerned because they have an Airbnb uh, business and they don't want it to compare, compete with their Airbnb. I'm dealing with a lot of drama uh, with this situation, but we try to always, uh, you know, we, we try to separate the drama from really what's going on. And of course, yeah. Uh, I have, I've been alderman for 25 years. I have a relationship with a lot of people in my ward. Uh, and over the years, you develop relationships with people uh, after 25 years of representing them. But anyway, uh, so the developer went to the table. He went and met with the community. Some folks didn't want the uh, park. Some folks didn't want certain things. Planning didn't want certain things. So the developer reconstructed it. And this is what he came up with. And this was the compromise for planning and for the community. We still have uh, a nice, nice houses. Uh, granted, if you look at this, it looks nice now, but this used to be on Well Street. It was O'Brien's restaurant, which was nice. But right behind there on Wheeling Street, it was a parking lot. 
It was a parking lot for over 20, over 25 years since I've been alderman. This was a parking lot that you now putting houses on um, and it's gonna enhance this block. Um, it's nice, it is it is in the same context of the other houses on the block. Uh, there are other people who approve this that's on the block on Wheeling Street. Uh, I have several of them to have emailed me. Um, and you have a couple of people and they have some personal things going on who don't like this. I'm not into the personal stuff. Uh, I'm not into people's personal things with each other. I'm, I'm into dealing with and being objective about these things and trying to deal with what I think is the majority of the support for this project. So with that, with the developer, uh, so and also the Old Town Merchants and Resident recuse themselves. Generally how I deal with uh, developments in this community, I've been dealing with the Old Town Merchants and Residents for 25 years. This is the first time they've recused themselves, or well, second time when the first hotel and now this one, they recused themselves from the development because it, it would, would, would have been unethical for them to give input. And, and, and I, they, so they were very honorable about it. They recused themselves and we did have a community meeting. I made the developer go door to door on Wheeling Street to work this thing out. I made them work for this. And they came up with a lot of compromises and this is what they came up with. And it's beautiful. Granted, you do have a, you do have, you did have, you did have um, curb cuts on Wheeling Street already. Wheeling Street is one of those streets where uh, you don't have alleys. So most places have to have curb cuts on these streets because there's no alley. Matter of fact, they actually empty their garbage on Wheeling Street. The garbage man had to drive down the street and empty the garbage on Wheeling Street because they don't have any alleys. These guys made less alleys, uh, less curb cuts uh, on the block. They took a parking lot and they're getting ready to build some beautiful buildings. Um, the hotel didn't go up any higher. Um, you know, the property owners on Wells Street, which are a lot of business owners who still live in the community, right? They want the hotel because the ho they need, they don't have enough support from the community for their businesses to survive, especially now in this economy. And they need the out of town money to come to the community in order to help keep that street vibrant and keep those businesses in place. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm in support of this from the, the emails that I got and from my determination from the meetings, there are people who are in support of this uh, and ciphering through, deciphering through the personal stuff. Uh, I see this as a, a proposal that the community, most of the people in the community chose to live with and I ask for the committee support. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. Do we have questions from committee members? All right, I just have one question just for the, for the record. Um, Katrina or the Alderman, uh, there was a public speaker that talked about traffic. Uh, and this, many of us know that Wells and North Avenue is a very congested intersection as, as we speak. Um, what, what was the traffic recommendations and how will it impact our neighbors on Wheeland? It doesn't seem to me that there's, tell me about that. Because that was obviously brought up in the, in the public comment period. Yeah, so a traffic, a full traffic study was conducted um, at the time of the hotel approval. Uh, a new one was not um, conducted for purposes of this amendment because there was really no material change to the hotel, which was potentially the traffic generator. Um, so again, um, all, a all access is from Wells. So there's no, there's no, I mean, it, there's going to be, um, all the loading, all the valet services, all of the parking for the hotel is all accessed off of Wells, not from Wheeland at all. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see any hands up. Um, can I get a motion to move, uh, do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. So move. Alderman Raboyas uh, moves to pass on uh, the item. Any objections? 
Hearing none, the item is passed um, as revised, as revised. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're in. Okay. Middle of page six, document number 20447, 26th Ward Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address, 2109 West Grand Avenue. The change request C32 Commercial Manufacturing and Employment District to C22 Motor Vehicle Related Commercial District. Uh, we have the attorney Dean Marigus on, on, on this application. Dean? Dean Marigus. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. I am here with uh, the applicant and owner, Sharon Burke. We are seeking a change request from C32 Commercial Manufacturing Employment to C22 Motor Vehicle Related Commercial District to permit a residential use on the second floor and to continue the commercial use on the ground floor and convert the second floor to one dwelling unit. We have worked uh, very closely with the community. Uh, we have worked with Alderman Roberto Maldonado, who on June 25th, 2020, submitted his letter of approval for the zoning change. Uh, we, will, uh, we are unaware of any objectors to this, and uh, we would welcome any questions. Dean, we have a letter of support from Alderman Maldonado, as you say. Uh, do we have questions from committee members? for the applicants. Alderman Lopez moves due pass. There's no questions. All right. So I didn't see any hands up or questions. So Alderman uh, Ray Lopez moves due pass uh, by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. All right, stay on the line, Dean. I think you're next also on document yeah. number 20445, 26th Ward. Oh, Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. This address, common address, 2636 West Evergreen Avenue. Change request, an RS3, residential single unit detached house district to an RT4, residential two flat, townhouse and multi-unit district. Dean, proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee again. Uh, Dean T. Marigus, the law firm of Marigus and Marigus at 1 North LaSalle Street. I am here with the owner and applicant, Ileana Mansour. We are requesting a, an RS3 residential single unit detached house district to RT4 residential two flat townhouse and multi-unit district to build a three-story residential masonry building with three residential dwelling units and three on-site enclosed parking spaces. Once again, we have worked very closely with the community and Alderman Roboira, I apologize, Alderman, uh, Alderman Maldonado, and uh, he has issued to the committee his letter of support for the zoning change for 2636 West Evergreen from RS3 to RT4. Uh, we would entertain any questions of the chair or members of the uh, of the. Uh, Thank board. you, Dean. We do have a letter of support from Alvin Maldonado. Questions? We do pass, chair. Chairman. Okay. Alderman Dowell. Alderman Dowell moves to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Um, any objections? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Have a great day. Okay. Now we're um, top of page seven, document number 20452, 25th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Uh, the change request, C12 Neighborhood Commercial District to a C13 Neighborhood Commercial District. Um, and the address is 1860. Is it Blue Island? 1860 to 1862 South. Oh, I'm sorry. 1860 through 1862 South Blue Island Avenue. Um, sorry for that uh, confusion. My my confusion, I should say. Uh, Tyler Manick uh, is the attorney for the applicant. Tyler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Tyler Manick of the Shane Banks Law Firm. I'm here on behalf of the owner, 1860 Blue LLC, which owns a subject property at 1860 to 62 South Blue Island. 
The property is a three-story commercial building. It has ground floor retail with two stories of office above. The property is currently zoned C12 and is a legal non-conforming development that exceeds the bulk requirements of that district. The owner seeks to rezone the property to the conforming zoning district of C13 in order to perform deferred maintenance of the property through appropriate building permits. Prior to filing the zoning map amendment application, the applicant met with the alderman, the alderman's zoning advisory council and neighbors who all support this application. We have submitted an aldermanic letter of support with this application. With the support of the alderman, uh, I respectfully request this committee's favorable recommendation to rezone 1860 to 62 South Blue Island to C13 zoning district. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, we do have a letter of support from Alderman Cicho Lopez. I see uh, the Alderman on the line. Is there any, anything more you want to comment on it? Alderman Cicho Lopez? Uh, no, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, just very briefly, um, uh, I really uh, appreciate the follow up on this project in this particular area. Um, we we want to make sure that we continue having a transparent process. Uh, unfortunately, in the past, we had in this particular area with this project is that uh, a lot of irregularities, even you know, some permits given before the, the application is even submitted. Uh, under the previous administration, uh, this is a sensitive area. We wanna make sure that we have, of course, applications that are supported and vetted by the residents. Uh, we, we look forward to having uh, these kind of applications that are in line um, with what we wanna see, uh, what we wanna see as a community, uh, is, a, is an area as a co uh, commercial uh, corridor, but we, of course, we want to continue to see a good balance uh, between the, um, the existing businesses. There's a proposal expansion of the Losano Library. We also very close to the, um, uh, to the Benito Juarez High School. So it's good to see commercial applications um, that are in line with the fabric of the neighborhood. Um, was just concerned before uh, there was uh, uh, irregularities even on around lifting more turns on tavern licenses and other unfortunate irregularities. But I'm glad to see that we continue to having a process that allow us to have um, commercial spaces that we continue to have growth in the neighborhood, but always in line with the social fabric, what was around and more important than anything else, that we respect the residents um, and that are much uh, more uh, impacted than anybody else. So thank you again and uh, look forward to continue seeing an area where we balance uh, development but also respecting our neighbors. Thank you, Alderman. Do we have questions for the Alderman or the applicant? The other Lopez moves do pass. Alderman Ray Lopez um, makes motion do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Um, any objections to that motion? So move. Hearing none, uh, the item is passed. Um, Thank you. Now we're in the uh, middle of page seven, document number 20451, Seventh Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 3006 through 3012 East 78th Street. And the change request plan development number 935 to RM5 residential multi unit district. And we have Tyler, uh, Tyler Manick uh, on this one again. Tyler. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Tyler Manick of the Shane Banks Law Firm. I wouldn't ask him for help from me. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of Elam Industries, which owns the property at 3012 East 78th Street, the subject property. The subject property is zoned as a residential plan development. The plan development was approved by city council in 2004 and expired in 2010 under its PD statements because no construction of the property was commenced in the time period within the plan development. As a result, the property must be rezoned out of the plan development so the applicant may develop the parcel. The applicant has met with the Alderman, with Alderman Mitchell about this matter and the Alderman is fully supportive of the applicant's request to rezone this lot to an RM 5.5 zoning district. The applicant has submitted a substitute ordinance and would ask this committee to move to adopt the substitute ordinance. Okay. Um, would you ask? All right. Uh, from the department, either Steve or Patrick, uh, do we have a substitute? Uh, 
Hello? Sorry, I was on mute. No, but we have been working with him on this. Um, Tyler, did you get that to Anna? Yeah, we sent it to Anna and Nicole back in July. Okay, we'll double check, but, but I mean, we'll double check and I'll send them back all the All right, so Patrick, you're going to have to, we're going to hold this and you're going to check on that for us so we can uh, proceed one way or another, right? Yes. Nope. And it just walked in. Yes. We do. We do have it, but that it went up to five point five to R five and a half. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because okay, because that's what in the narrative was an R five, but according to Tyler and now you, it's, it's an R five point five. We did republish it, and it has been republished with the with the change with the point five. I don't know if Tyler um re had <laughs> we, did, we, did, we re noticed. We sent it to Anna the re notice. Okay. And the committee. So we're in compliance with all the regulatory aspect of this change. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, Alderman Raboyas moves to accept the substitute by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Hearing none, the substitute is before us. Um, and to, uh, so we've got the we've got it up to an R five point five, and for the benefit of the committee members, the reason we're doing this is because the time frame of what six years, seven years was has has elapsed. Six years, Your Honor. Okay. Questions, comments. All right, I have one. I have one further question on it, though. So, uh, what was the previous plan development that uh, expired? Was it some kind of expansion of this industry? Uh, it was it was town it was townhomes. Oh, okay. All right, had nothing to do with uh, the owner of the property, which obviously is a looks like no a use. No, she just bought the property this summer. Oh. Okay. So she had no affiliation with the prior project. Okay. All righty. That was my that was my question. Any other questions? Move to approve, Chairman. Okay. Alderman Lopez moves to approve. Alderman Lopez moves to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Um, any objections to that motion? Hearing none, uh, the item is passed as substituted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Okay. Uh, bottom of page seven, document number 20463, 24th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 2100 South Pulaski Road. Change request B32 Community Shopping District to a B23 Neighborhood mi Mixed Use District. Uh, our attorney is Richard Zolke. Richard. Richard, uh, can you unmute so we can hear you? Okay, so what we'll do, we're gonna hold Hello? to, wait, do we hear him, Richard? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is David Zolke. All right, well, are you representing uh, the applicant on 2100 South Pulaski? Yes, I'm sorry about that, yes, we, Let's identify yourself for the record so we can proceed. Well, we were going to ask to defer this matter to the next. Uh, All right. To the next man. We tried to contact the uh, office, but. Uh, well, okay. So that's no major problem. Um, so we it's a late uh, deferral. So Alderman Raboyas moves to defer this item by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Hearing any objections? Questions? Hearing none, uh, this item is deferred. Uh, do we, are we deferring it to the next meeting or what are we doing? Uh, yes, please, to the next meeting, it would be fine. Okay, so it's, it'll be deferred till the next meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. 
Okay, thank you. All right, now we're on the top of page eight. Uh, item number 20461T1, 11th Ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 335 through 337 West 30th Place. Change request M12 Limited Manufacturing Business Park District or Business Park District to a B22 Neighborhood Mixed Use District. We have Paul Kolpak uh, on the application. Paul. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Paul Kopak. I represent the applicant, Mr. Scalise. Uh, this is a type one. We did uh, file a substitute narrative, and I would ask that the substitute narrative and the plans uh, be introduced into this proceeding. So move, Chairman Alderman Lopez. Alderman Ray Lopez moves to accept the substantive narrative plans for the type one application by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any yes, objections sir. to that motion? Hearing none, the substantive narrative plans are accepted. Uh, continue, Paul. Uh, the applicant intends to request a zoning change from the existing M1 2 to that of a B2 2 to subdivide lots 22 and 23. Both lots are owned by the applicant. He intends on keeping the single family residence, which recently has been deconverted, uh, which will remain on lot 23. And his intention is to sell lot 22 to his son. And his son will then construct a new two story dwelling unit with basement single family residence on that lot. Uh, we did have a community meeting. Uh, we have community support, and I believe there's a letter of support from Alderman Thompson in your file. And we're prepared to answer any questions. We do have a letter of support from Alderman uh, Patrick Thompson. Um, Paul, uh, questions from committee members. Quick question for you, Paul. Why are we doing B? Well, we thought that the, for the side yards that it would work out better. Um, okay. and, and that was the reason for it. Okay, but the Alderman's cool with that? Yes, he is. Okay, other questions? Hearing none, can I get a motion uh, to move to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? So move, Ms. Pams. Alderman Ravoyas moves to pass. Any objections? Hearing none, the item's passed. With substitute narrative. With the substantive narrative. Of narrative. All right. Thank you very much, everybody right, be Paul. well. Okay. Now we're in the middle of page eight, uh, document number 20446 in the sixth ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. Common address 7151 through 7153 South Halsted Street. The change request a B12 neighborhood shopping district to a C12 neighborhood commercial district. Uh, we have Sabrina um, Harrell, I believe, um, on this application. Sabrina? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Sabrina Harrell. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Grind39. Um, the applicant is seeking to rezone from B1-2 to C1-2 for the purpose of having a restaurant that will also be able to sell alcoholic beverages. The property is located at 7151 to 53 South Halstead Street. Um, it takes up two lots and there's two lots to the north that are baked, that is vacant land. And those lots are gonna be used for off street parking. It's approximately 14 to 16 parking spaces should be able to fit within those, those lots. We met with Alderman Sawyer along with the applicant. And at the request of Alderman Sawyer, we also had a community meeting in which Alderman Sawyer was present to answer any questions that any community member had and also to be able to inform them of his support. Um, in the area, there's no restaurants, no sit down restaurants, there's only fast food. So people in the community either have to go south to the Beverly neighborhood or north to High Park neighborhood in order to have a sit down meal. Um, I should mention that the owners of Grind 39 is a family owned business and they actually have a 
restaurant or renovating a restaurant a few blocks down on 76 in Halsted. They're renovating that right now as we speak, and that's going to be a breakfast restaurant. So this is a community in desperate need of revitalization, and therefore um, I'm asking for that this for the support of the committee and that our request is granted and that we are rezoned from B1-2 to C1-2. Okay. All right, we do have some questions from committee members. Um, but before we get to that, um, Sabrina, for the record, uh, your last name is Herrera? Herrera. Okay, I, I, Okay. that's number one. Number two is uh, the subject matter are two lots. We have nothing to do with the parking and whatever might ensue on that particular parcels, even though you've worked it out. This subject hearing is only on the the, the 71, 51 through 53 South Halsted. Um, Correct. Okay. And um, the, um, it, this is going to be, as you say, a sit down restaurant with full food and beverage. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Um, okay. Well, I would have my own other questions, but you've already met with the, with the alderman. Um, and you're going to see, which is a you know more of a tavern and more uh, uh, liberal use. That, that's my question, but I'm going to leave it up. Um, I'll leave it up to the alderman and, and his decision for the community. Uh, which do you have? I'm sorry. Do you have a copy of the letter of support? Yes, we do. Well, we need to get it. Um, we did send it. You did send it to Nicole in my in my office. Yes, we did email it. We'll, we'll make sure. I'll contact her after the meeting. Okay, because we, we're going to double back with you on that. All right. Nicole is just so FYI. All right. Um, Alderman Lopez, a neighboring alderman over there. So, Ray, you want to talk about this one or ask questions? I Actually, I, I just want to uh, commend our colleague, Alderman Sawyer. I think the nearest sit down restaurant is only at Kennedy King. <laughs> to be honest, on, on Halsted, uh, almost a mile and a half away. So it's a welcome addition uh, to the neighborhood. The question I did actually have um, was with regards to COVID. Um, I'm assuming the lots also in, in the meantime are gonna be used more for outdoor dining than parking at this point? Or has well, there been right. any discussion on that? Um, I can't. From the drawings I saw, I don't see where the architect has included um, outdoor dining, but I'm sure that's something their design was before COVID hit. So I'm sure that's something that will have to be reconsidered. But I should note that it's going to take some time to get the project done. Um, you know, first, clearly, we, they have to secure a building permit. They also have to go through the liquor license process, and then they have to renovate the building. So we are clearly looking at anywhere from, you know, 15 months to two years. Wow. Okay, well, thank, well, thank you uh, for that answer. I'm excited to see another addition, uh, sit down addition to our neighborhoods uh, on the South side. And hopefully by then COVID will just be an asterisk in history, uh, God willing, yeah. by the time you open up. Congratulations to you and to our colleague. Thank you, Chairman. All right, um, Alderman Osterman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Great. Um, I just wanted to ask the question you were gonna ask, and I think um, I wanna congratulate um, my colleague, Alderman Sawyer, on bringing the business, and even though it'll take time, I think it'll help revitalize the community. But what, just in, I think in layman's terms to um, the attorney, if you could explain why you wanna go to the, the C zoning versus a, a B zoning that might let you do the same thing. Uh, no, because the um, when the architect processed the zoning um, for the permit application, it was rejected, and they were informed that it had you had to go to C one two in order for them to be able to actually sell alcohol. So that's the reason. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, and uh, all the best with the project. Thank, thank you, you. Chairman. Just, um, Chairman Alderman, Alderman Osterman. Sometimes I think depending on the the restaurant is designed. Um, there's just a lot more bar than 
food service area there. That might have been, and 100% sure that might have been the rejection uh, because of the overall uh, percentage of square footage devoted to liquor only. So, um, uh, Chairman Alderman Dow. Yeah, I just want to be clear. Is this a restaurant or is this a tavern? Um, we can ask the, uh, I, I asked that question in the beginning, but uh, let's ask uh, our attorney to answer the question. Okay, well, it is a, a restaurant and bar. It's going to be called um, Grind 39 Sports Bar and Grill. Um, but and it's about 50 50 seating for restaurant and 50 bar. Um, well, but as mean? far as these, the for the zoning application, um, we were required to use the term establish tavern use with the service of food. That is what Anna approved for the language. Excuse me, chairman. Well, wait, 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 wait a second. I'm going to wait. Uh, Oh, is that Alderman Sawyer on the line? Yes, it is. Yes, it oh, is. Okay, well then, uh, Alderman, we're on the uh, South Halstead. And yes. If you were listening in, there was a question about why it needed a C zoning. Well, I mean, it was my understanding. Um, this is a, a tavern with a incidental use. Uh, uh, I did see the plans and uh, the I, I am I have and receipt of the plans architecture that would be a question I, I know that would be as a technical matter but uh it was an expansive use it's a very large place you're breaking With, up Alderman. can you hear me better you're coming in and out uh I'm um, oh, sorry chair uh can you all hear me better now yes sir uh what I was just saying it, it, it's a fairly large place. Uh, with extensive dining capacity. So I didn't know how much uh, percentage wise would be dedicated toward the dining as opposed to the tavern operation. That was something I would defer to uh, zoning about. You just muted yourself. Chairman. Okay. Chairman. Well, all right, hold on a second. Uh, is there, uh, how about uh, Steve Valencia yeah. or Patrick? Uh, can you chairman can you can you hear me steve i can hear you now let's see yeah you've heard the question yes so this is steve valenziano department of planning and development and because of the design of the facility or of the uh yeah the rest of the bar it it, it, it qualifies or is classified as a tavern because of the amount of seating in the taverns area compared to the overall seating in the in the establishment so they will require a tavern license and it requires a C1 to be done as of right. Um, the other question I did have is that the parking lot, is the parking lot included in this zoning change? No, it's, well, I, I, I don't see it, but let's ask uh, the Sabrina about that. No, it is not. But is it, is it I guess that's my question, is it uh, contiguous to, your, to yes. the uh, tavern itself? Yes, it is. Okay, so I think the, what you're going to need to do right now is defer this and re-notice and um, rezone a larger piece of property to include the parking, uh, because the otherwise you're going to have a split zoning situation. Well, let me just. All right. Well, then I'm saying you won't be you, when you come when you come to get your permit. You're going to have an issue because of the split zoning of the lot. If if the uh, parking lot is zone B1 and then the building is zone C1. The ordinance says if there's a conflict, you go with a more restrictive uh, regulation. All right, so let me just ask the question um, in order to try to expedite this. Uh, that's, that's later on down the road. I mean, it would require I don't even know the size of this restaurant, but depending on its location, it's it's six thousand two hundred fifty square feet. All right. So what? I'm what, sorry, Chairman. I just got a, a message from Anna Robles, and she says that the 
entire lot is involved in the zoning change. So it does include the parking lot. Okay. So we're fine. Okay. Uh, but just for practical purposes on a 6,000 square foot restaurant, what is the legal requirement for parking? I don't think it's, um, even though it's no. practically might not be <laughs> the best way to pursue it. There would be about five spaces for what they're Legally, they would need five. Mm -hmm. And the architect has proposed this for 14. Is oh, yeah. Well, that, that's all good. But at least from our perspective, that we're approving this today for what what I'm hearing from Anna is four city lots. Right. And I just wanted to make sure because if we're if the we're going to use it as outside dining, that'd be that would be where you would come up with the with the issue. And I just want to make sure that since we are seeing more and more of this outside dining, that it is included. So it is according to Anna, the whole lot is in. So that's good. That's fine. Sabrina and Alderman Sawyer, are you guys cool with that? I'm fine. I'm good. Okay. Um, yes, and it is actually stated in paragraph 13 that the property will provide 14 on site parking spaces right. that are adjacent to the existing one story building. Yeah. Sabrina, I think it's just a matter are there four individual pins that we're going to be changing the zoning at, at, uh, and that's what we've heard from the department is that that's all going to be done today. And then you can figure out the license, you can figure out everything else, but we want to get you started um and not have you come back a second time is i think uh what we don't want to happen for you great it's okay with that certainly okay uh, how about our department you cool with that steve yeah we're, we're square now yes great okay questions for the alderman hearing no other questions can i get a motion oh mr chairman Alderman uh, Raboyas moves uh, do pass on the motion by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections to that motion? Hearing none, uh, the item is passed. Thanks, committee. Have a great day. Good luck. Okay. Now um, we're going to go out of order to page three, back to page three, and top of page three. Uh, this is document number 8506, 28th Ward. Ordinance was referred on November 26th of 19. The common addresses are 2401 through 2547 West Congress Street, 2410 through 2546 West Harrison Street, 2400 through 2538 West Florney Street, 2400 through 2534 West Lexington Street and various other ad additional addressees. The change request, RT4 residential two flat townhouse and multi-unit district, an RM 4.5 residential multi-unit district, an RM5 residential multi-unit district and a B22 neighborhood mixed use district. All those are gonna be converted to an R. T 3.5 residential two flat townhouse and multi-unit district if we pass on uh, these ordinances. And this is an aldermanic. Uh, we have Jason Irvin that would like to explain to the committee. Uh, Alderman Irvin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and members of the committee. Um, again, this is uh, part two of a down zoning request that uh, we've been working with the Tri-Taylor community association on. The first portion we did a couple of months ago was the area east of Western. We're now focusing on the area west of Western, which is roughly bounded by Western on the east. Uh, the railroad tracks that separate near west from East Garfield Park on the west, uh, Congress on the uh, north, and Roosevelt Road on the south. Uh, this area uh, had a, with a slight exclusion of a M, uh, M district in that area that already is existing uh, along Campbell. Uh, primarily, this is a request to down zone a uh, fairly uh, dense area to something that is a little more appropriate for the uh, neighborhood and for the community. Uh, again, this process has uh, been initiated 
uh, with our office, along with the Tri-Taylor Community Association. Uh, and there is overwhelming support uh, for this uh, particular change. Again, uh, we, the request of the community is that the buildings in the area not be so, so tall as they distort the character of the existing properties in the neighborhood. So uh, if, if it would uh, please the committee, uh, if any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, I would uh, ask for a favorable uh, vote for members of the committee. Thank you, Alderman Irvin. Uh, questions for the Alderman? Um, hearing no questions, can I get a motion? Move to pass on the item. So moved. So moved. Cardona. Alderman Cardona moves uh, uh, do pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections to that motion? Hearing none, the item is passed. And I wanted to thank uh, the alderman for his patience in working with our committee on this ordinance. I know it's been a while, so I appreciate your patience. Thanks, Jason. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, now we're back to the uh, bottom of page eight. Uh, this is document number 20458, second ward. Ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. The common address is 1534 West Augusta Boulevard and the change request RS3 residential single unit detached house district to an RM 4.5 residential multi-unit district. And we have uh, the attorney Nick Fatikas on this one. How about it, Nick? Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, I'm stepping in for Nick today. For the record, my name is Daniel Box, and I'm an attorney with the law offices of Sam Banks. I'm here today on behalf of the applicant, 1534 West Augusta, LLC. The applicant is the contract purchaser of the subject property located at 1534 West Augusta Boulevard. The applicant is seeking to construct a new three-story, three-unit residential building at the property. To do so, the applicant intends to raise the existing two-story single-family home at the site. In order to permit the project, the applicant is seeking a zoning change from an RS3 residential single-unit detached house district to an RM4.5 residential multi-unit district. We have worked with Alderman Hopkins on this project. I believe a letter of support is already on file for with your office. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. We do have a letter of support from Alderman Hopkins. Questions from committee members? I don't see any hands up. Can I get a motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, Alderman uh, Austin moves to pass. Alderman Austin moves to uh, pass by the, same, by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Three none. It's passed. Thank you all. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Now we're on the top of page nine. Document number 20462 T1 in the first ward. The ordinance was uh, referred on July 22nd of 2020. The common address 1914 through 1924 West Chicago Avenue. The change request B32 Community Shopping District and an RT residential two flat townhouse and multi unit district, all uh, to a C23 motor vehicle related commercial district. Uh, our attorney is John Fritchie. Good afternoon, John. Are you on the Mr. line? Chairman, members of the committee, how is everybody? Well, good. Uh, as, you, as you said, this is to combine a split zoning into a new zoning classification. And it's intended to do a couple of things. Uh, members of the committee may be familiar with the property. It's an existing Roots Pizza, and next door to that is an existing West Town Bakery. And these same owners also have a restaurant on the rooftop called Homestead. Uh, this rezoning is being sought to do a few things. One, to consolidate the zoning, but also to allow the potential enclosure of the outdoor rooftop restaurant, which now more than ever uh, is going to be a business necessity but also to allow for the potential expansion of the building on the east side of the property for additional com commercial purposes. Uh, there have been extensive meetings going on with the community group. Uh, Alderman Laspada and his office have been fantastic all along the way. 
Uh, we know of no objection to this. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, John. Uh, we do have a question. We'll start with Alderman Osterman. Yeah, I got a couple questions for the attorney. Um, this is going to increase automobile traffic. Aren't we trying to get away from that and, and get rid of cars? More foot traffic for, for local businesses? This actually is three local businesses built into one and uh, has worked very well actually with no uh, existing parking, nor would there be any needed here. They have already curb cuts and uh, loading docks uh, on both sides of the property. And what about- I, I appreciate the inquiry bicycle. though. There are actually bicycle racks right in front. Okay, no further questions. We're trying to make it walkable like Andersonville. All right, John. Uh, any other questions? Uh, do we have a letter of support from Alderman La Spada? We do. He wanted to speak on the matter, but I don't see him on here, but he does support the matter. John, do you have a letter of support? There, there's, a, there's a September 3rd letter of support from the Alderman that was submitted okay. to members of the committee as well as myself. Okay. And then... Uh, just uh, playing a devil's advocate here. Uh, C2, are you training any any change of uses be, uh, with the C2? Well, the, the, the C2 is for potential change of use, especially with respect to the Eastern parcel. Uh, they wanna have some greater leeway with respect to per, potential commercial tenants, as well as a potential opportunity to put in a dispensary social equity uh, license holder once those have been determined. I think that's where I was going, John. Uh, and that has been uh, that has been brought to the community, and the alderman is well aware of. That, that, that's been that's been explicitly and lengthily discussed with the community and the alderman, and in fact, it is noted in the alderman's letter of support. Uh, okay. That, that this is uh, also with respect to a potential social equity uh, dispensary location. That's the extent of my question. All right. Any other questions? If not. Can I get a motion? So moved. Oh. So moved. Okay. So Alderman Osterman uh, moves to pass on the motion by the same roll call vote that was used to determine quorum. Any objections to the motion? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you, John. Thank you, all. Thank you John. Take care. Take care. All right. Now we're in the middle of page nine, document number 20448, the 27th Ward ordinance was referred on July 22nd of 2020. This common address is 2019 West Washington Boulevard. Uh, change request, RT4 residential two flat townhouse and multi-unit district to an RM 4.5 residential multi-unit district. Uh, we have Bruce Ross as the attorney. Uh, yes, I'm uh, basically, uh, this is a four unit dwelling. Uh, we have a letter of support from the alderman as well as- oh, Wait, 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 community. Bruce. Just identify yourself again for the record before you start oh, your testimony. Okay. Absolutely. My name is Bruce Ross. I'm actually the developer on the project. Um, work closely with uh, Alderman Burnett uh, to get this going as well. Can you explain it now to the committee? So basically this is a vacant lot. What we're looking to do is build a four unit dwelling on this uh, particular space. Um, there's a couple of things. It's currently zoned as RT4, as you noted. Uh, we're looking to move it to an RT4.5 to, to get to the height level we need for a four unit with the garden apartment. Um, so uh, effectively, um, it also has uh, three parking spaces. So we're looking for the parking variance as well with respect to um, uh, the neighborhood. All right, so I think Alderman Burnett's on the call. Alderman Burnett. Yeah, and 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 please excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman and Bruce. Uh, you know, it's probably been a while since we met. Uh, so, uh, did we meet with the uh, uh, the uh, West Town neighbor chamber, the West Town neighbors, neighbors of West? No, no, it was uh, uh, near West, so on Damon. Oh, excuse me, on Western. But uh, Eddie Winters, uh, with respect to the yeah, health community. It, it, yeah, well, how Home, homeowners of West Town? I'm sorry. That's yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, and we and you and we went to the church and had the meeting and everything was okay. All right. Yeah, 
I'm in support of it. He did meet with the community. We had a community meeting. It's been a it's been a while, as you can see, Mr. Chairman. I got so many of these things, and this COVID set us back. But uh, yeah, uh, the community's in support of it. I'm in support of it. We have committee support. Thank you, Alderman. Um, I'm looking at the application. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the owner of the property, is City of Chicago Department of Housing. That is correct. And Mr. Ross, you are you. You are buying it from the city of Chicago? That is correct. And you're putting four units on there? Yes. And um, is there a, uh, an affordability on this property? No, that was not included in the, uh, in the negotiated sale. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Anybody on the committee? All right. Um, I hear a motion to support this. So is that so Chairman? Moved. Chairman, uh, yes. Uh, Alderman Austin moves to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Uh, any objections to the motion? Hearing none, the item is passed. Thank you. All right. Bottom of page nine. Document number 20296 in the 27th Ward. The ordinance was referred on December 18th of 19. Common address is 1140 West Erie Street. Change request M12, Limited Manufacturing Business Park District to a B35 Community Shopping District and then to a residential business plan development. Uh, we have Katie Janky Dow. Dale, I'm sorry, Katie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Katie Janky Dale from the law firm of DLA Piper. And with my colleague, Rich Clowder, we represent 1140 West Erie LLC, the applicant for this matter. As a preliminary um, item, we'd like to incorporate the record from the August 20th, 2020 Planning Commission meeting where this matter was heard. Alderman uh, Cardona moves to incorporate the records from the Planning Commission by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections? Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Continue, Katie. Thank you. The property is an irregularly shaped uh, parcel bounded by Ogden, May, and Erie. The applicant is requesting this zoning change in order to uh, build an eight-story residential building with 113 units. This project is subject to the Near North pilot. And as a result, it's a 20% requirement that per the pilot, none would have to be provided on site. However, as a result of discussions with the community as well as Alderman Burnett, we've agreed to provide 5% on site at 60% of AMI, 15% off site, which has the benefit of allowing us to provide more or three bedroom family size affordable units uh, when zero would be required. So 26% of our affordable units will be three bedrooms and zero would be required otherwise. This ARO strategy also allows us to potentially provide two extra units above and beyond the 20% requirement in a couple of the unit or buildings that have garden units. Um, it also allows for rehabilitation of failing buildings in gentrifying uh, neighborhoods such as Garfield Park and Humboldt Park. Like I said, we've met with Alderman Burnett and worked very closely with the neighbors of River West on this project, which has been a long time coming. Uh, we've been working on this one since for almost uh, two years now. And we're happy to answer any questions, but appreciate your time and consideration of this. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. I know we have um, Alderman Burnett uh, on this item. Walter? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. So as the counselor said, they've been working for two years on this. Um, matter of fact, the community organization, the neighbors of uh, neighbors of River West, I have so many community organizations. The neighbors of River West uh, encouraged them to change this design uh, a couple of times. Uh, also, uh, the planning department encouraged them to make some changes. Uh, they've worked with them. We've negotiated, as you can see, on the affordable housing. Uh, we were able to get bigger units and also a couple of extra affordable units out of the deal. Uh, this is a developer who's built something down the street. That's why it was easy for him to uh, work with the community 
because he had he keep he, he kept his commitments with the community with the past development with that we asked uh so the neighbors of river west approved it we had a community meeting we approved it we asked for the community support also thank you thank you alderman questions for the alderman or the applicant hearing none can i get a motion move so move alderman Raboyas moves uh do pass the call that was used to determine quorum any objections to that motion? Hearing none, the item is passed as revised. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to top of page 10. Item number 19900, 25th Ward. Ordinance was referred on November 14th of 2018. Common address 1115 West Washington Boulevard and 19 through 27 North May Street. The change request, residential plan development number 1357 to residential plan development number 1357 as amended. So uh, Katie Janky Dale, you, you're, you're on on this one again. Yep. Great. Thank you again for the record. My name is Katie Janky Dale from the law firm of DLA Piper. I represent the applicant 19 North May LLC. As a preliminary item, this uh, matter was also heard by the Plan Commission on July 16th, 2020, and we would request that the committee incorporate the record from that Plan Commission hearing. Alderman Cardona moves to incorporate the records from the Plan Commission by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objection on the motion? Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Continue. Thank you. The property is located on the east side of May Street between Washington and Madison. We are seeking this PD amendment in order to modify the plans for the what will be sub area B to allow for a 15 story residential building containing 58 units and 78 parking spaces. The overall project will result in a uh, neighborhood opportunity bonus uh, fund payment of approximately $2.7 million. Of the 58 proposed units, 28 were previously um, approved pursuant to um, the 2015 ARO, it predates the pilot, and generates a three unit requirement. The 30 new units uh, generate a six unit ARO requirement. However, in working with the community and the, um, and the uh, alderman, the applicant has agreed to forego the ability to pay the fee in lieu for the previously approved units and instead build nine for sale affordable single family homes pursuant to the pilot. We've worked very closely for, um, with the community, including the three different community groups and the 25th Ward Zoning Advisory Board. And I'm not sure if he's on, but you should have a letter of support in your file from Alderman Cicho Lopez. With that, we're available for any questions, but appreciate your time and consideration of this. Thank you. We do have a letter of support from Alderman Cicho Lopez. I see he's still on the call uh alderman cicho lopez would you like to comment on this thank you uh chairman um no, again we we follow up uh we follow our uh, community driven zoning process have multiple meetings with uh um with the stakeholders in the community in particular our zoning advisory board uh recommended the um um the approval i know that this has been uh waiting for quite some time so we appreciate the applicants' uh, patience to make sure that we we have a, a good process. Uh, we will continue working with the applicant in terms of the local hiring component. I know that that was important for uh, a lot of the uh, people who attended the meetings and zoning advisory board members, and of course, making sure that these, uh, uh, I know that there's some concerns, of course, on, on uh, the congestion that already the, the West Loop has. And I know that there's a commitment to make sure that we work with the construction company on site uh, to make sure that we we don't repeat some issues that that happened in the past in the first phase. Um, so again, we'll continue working um, on the application following up. Uh, the local hiring component, of course, this is something that um, has been brought up in several locations, and I I also like to urge our colleagues so that we uh, there's a work in progress, and uh, we we appreciate the um the applicant's patience i know we've done the best we can there's a lot of room for improvement uh but i look forward to working um together to to a proposal that is um, beneficial to the neighborhood and the city as a whole thank you alderman questions for the alderman 
Um, I, I have a quick question for you, Alderman um, Cicho Lopez. So just to summarize, um, for the benefit of the committee, uh, we have what, 73 residential units in this handsome building. Um, and there are how many affordable units in this building? In the building itself, you want. I can answer that. Um, it's fifty. It's fifty-eight units in this new building. Um, it is a condo, um, luxury condo building. So we won't be providing units on site, but we will be providing them as single-family homes off-site. Within the community area, I presume, Katie. Right. The first ten percent, uh, or the first three, have to be within two miles. The second six um, have to be anywhere within the pilot for the arrow in the pilot. Okay. Um, and Chairman, just to, to add very quickly, I know that you ask, uh, but I want to make sure the applicant has um, um, also has a time to respond. Uh, what in terms of the the offsite um, affordable housing units? These are uh, affordable um, townhomes that will be um, available right. um, to the community, and we have worked. To make it as within or the legal framework as affordable as possible. So I know the range is between uh, 100 and 120 percent AMI. We have agreed with the applicant to make it at 100 percent, so the lower end, to make it as affordable as we can in areas of um, of need. So we have identified in our areas on the west side, and I know some units will be also allocated for the Pilsen area. So we're trying to, of course, have within. Uh, the area, um, making sure that we serve in different communities, even outside of the 20 feet ward. Uh, I understand, you know, we do have a huge issue of affordability. So we've been working with the housing department, uh, trying to make it as affordable and as spread out as possible so that we meet different demographics. Thank you, Alderman. I see Alderman um, Gil Villegas' uh, hand is raised. Alderman Villegas. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, what are what are the costs of these uh, luxury condos? Well, um, one thing to clarify while I get that per square foot um, basis is um, just to clarify, we're actually doing affordable single family homes instead of townhomes for the, the offsite arrow units, um, which I know looks very well received at Plain Commission. And let me just get the square foot per square foot. Um, on site. In the meantime, okay. While we're waiting for Katie, I wanted to uh, tell the uh, committee members that the Public Safety Committee is going to start at 2.30 rather than 2 o'clock. And God willing, we'll be done by 2.15. So the pricing we're expecting is around um, six hundred square uh, dollars per square foot for the for the condo units on site. And what's the average uh, um, square foot? Sorry, um, and that, that results in about a million dollar uh, purchase price or sale price for the units. So about a million dollars uh, per and and, and the single family homes. What are, what are the prices of the single family homes? We've been working with the Department of Housing. Um, we haven't identified the sites quite yet. Um, you know, obviously, because it's a condo project, we have a pretty significant and unfortunately, probably a more significant period of pre sales that we have to hit before we can even pull a permit and start construction. Um, but use, using the formulas um, from DOH will arrive at those offsite affordable. And it may be based on different numbers than what we have today, given you know it's based on the um, AMIs of the year that we start marketing those um, single family homes. So, can you give an approximation? I mean, of, of um, I believe that um, on some ones that we've been doing for the first phase, um, we are at about three hundred nineteen thousand for those uh, for those homes. Three hundred and nineteen thousand. Mm -hmm. And how, how many bedrooms, et cetera? They are, um, I believe, they're all going to be four bedroom uh, offsite single family homes. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Other questions from committee members? Hearing none, can I get a motion moved to pass by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum? 
I'm here. So moved by Osterman. Kitchen pass, Alderman Cardona. Alderman uh, Osterman moves to pass. Um, any objections to that motion? Hearing none, the item is passed. Congratulations yep. on that one. All right, uh, you've heard that public safety is going to be started at 2.30, right? Okay. Now we're on the bottom of page 10. Document number 20397, 20th Ward. Ordinance was referred on April 22nd of 2020. Yeah. Common address, 38 West 64th Street. Change request, M23 Light Industry District and M12 Limited Manufacturing Business District to an M32 Heavy Industry District and then to plan development. Uh, John Lawler is on the line representing uh, this application. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair. Thank, Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, now we can hear you. There's a little bit of, uh, of, of static, but I think we can hear you loud and clear now, John. You're muted now, I think, so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, good. You can- Thank get you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jack Lawler, attorney and partner with the Denton's Law Firm in Chicago, representing the applicant, the People's Gas Light and Coke Company. This application was approved by the Chicago Plan Commission at its August 20 meeting with the support of 20th Ward Alderman Jeanette Taylor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we respectfully request that the August 20 record of the Plan Commission be incorporated into the record of this proceeding. Um, Alderman Cicho Lopez moves to incorporate the records from the Plan Commission by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Any objections to the motion? Hearing none, the records are incorporated. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the People's Gas Light and Coke Company proposes to construct a two-story, approximately 86,000 square foot district field service center uh, at 38 West 64th Street, replacing a similar century-old facility that's currently located on the site. Uh, just so you know, a field service center houses people's personnel and assets that are engaged in operating the utility company and maintaining its infrastructure systems. So uses include offices, vehicle storage and repair, fueling stations, and communications uh, facilities. The subject property is uh, located in an area that's dominated by transportation-related uses, uh, such as the uh, nearby Dan Ryan Expressway and the nearby rail yards. Uh, land uses in the vicinity are also consistent with transportation type uses and orientated uses uh, such as Chicago's fleet management facility on 65th Street, ANA auto repair, and transmissions for less. The project before you today is substantially similar uh, to similar shop projects located at 4001 Peterson and 4201 West 35th Street, previously approved by the Plan Commission and City Council as PDs number 1413 and 1425 in 2019 and 2018. The Department of Planning's report to the Plan Commission states that the proposed development of the subject property will be generously landscaped and provide buffering uh, and scenery, uh, hiding the pro project from public view. The PD application before you uh, first proposes to rezone the 11.27 acre site from its existing M23 and M12 zoning district to the same N3-2 classification that the city approved underlying zoning district for people similar north and shop, south shop facilities that I described a moment ago. Uh, as required under the Chicago zoning ordinance, because this project is over 10 acres, we are also seeking plan development approval. The approximately $65 million south shop investment is anticipated to generate 250 construction jobs and I uh, have with me today project architect Eric Buck, if you would like to have him walk you through the site, as well as um, Alan Weber, uh, People's Facilities Construction Manager, who is available to answer questions. Uh, John, we'll wait. We'll see if the all of them have questions on it. Uh, obviously, I think most of us are familiar with that heavily dense 
area there in the uses. Um, but um, let's see what the alderman have. We and you've you've met with the alderman, yeah. Yes. Because I know she. We had that letter of support at Planning Commission, I believe. Correct. Yeah. And and again, you've always had this site for over a century. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like it's a new use to the neighbors, so to speak. No, and there are no residences nearby. Well. That's 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 another issue we'll talk about in the near future with uh, this heavy industry in regards to zoning and its proximity to to residential. But that's another day. Um, so we do have a letter of support from Alderman Jeanette Taylor. Uh, questions from committee members. I, I just what uh, I'm sorry. Did I hear it in your um, presentation? Is there lead certification here? I don't believe the building is LEED certified, but the architect is here if you have questions. Well, that's a question I have since it is um, an interesting, it's a necessary use, but uh, we've seen a lot of projects with ComEd and others that have some degree of cert, uh, LEED certification. So I don't- I, Well, there's a lot of very admirable features. Perhaps we could let the uh, project architect, Eric Buck, say a few words at this point. Eric, are you with us? Please yes. do. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Eric? Yeah, we're, um, we're not going to. I can't hear you. Let me see. Try it again. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Um, this is, we're using the, the sustainable. Identify, your, identify yourself for the record, please. Uh, my name is Eric Buck. I'm the senior project architect with Epstein architecture and engineering, and been working on all the PD projects with People's Gas heretofore. Um, the, let me find my page. We're, we're meeting the uh, sustain, Chicago Sustainable Compliance Path 100 point goal uh, instead of LEED. And, uh, if we were pursuing LEED, that would um, take up 80% of the project points. Uh, but instead, we're pursuing the 100-point path and kind of highlights are exceeding the baseline model required by Chicago Energy Conservation Code, exceeding the storage and rate components of the stormwater ordinance, a green roof of over more than 50% of the roof, electric vehicle charging stations for company vehicles and employees. This, and this strategy has also been employed uh, successfully at North and Central Shops. Uh, this is a picture of the ground floor plan with a picture of the uh, electric vehicle charging stations at Central Shop. I think Alderman Dowell has her hand up. Uh, Alderman Dowell. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is also for the architect. Um, I see you're putting a crosswalk on 64th and State. Can you talk about your landscaping plans? along State Street. Um, if we can go back to the landscape plan at the, I think it's like slide 11. There, so that that's the architectural site plan. Let's go down to the landscaping, next slide down. Yes, so landscaping plan is, um, is a, uh, there's landscaping in the employee parking, which is to the, the upper right-hand corner of the site. And there's screening um, around 64th along State and West 65th Street. Um, the, we've been working with zoning and the DPD to exceed the required number of screening trees and in the approved landscape plan, which is this. And a lot also developed along with precedents set by the North and Central Shops. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Alderman. Any other questions? Hearing none, can I get a motion uh, to move due pass by the move same call to determine quorum? Move due pass, Chair. Alderman Dowell uh, makes that motion. Um, any objections to the motion? Hearing none, the item is passed. Um, and thank, thank you. you for your uh, maybe we should have heard for the entire presentation, but um, you certainly. Uh, 
I think have uh, accommodated us in the uh, energy uh, certification and also the landscape plans. All right. Uh, Thank you. Now we're going to the top of page 11. Um, this is uh, application number 20421 14th Ward Ordinance was referred on June 17th of 2020. Uh, the common address is 3330 through 3356 West 51st Street. The change request M12 Limited Manufacturing Business Park District to an M222 Light Industry District. Uh, this is a uh, going to be a deferred item based on the attorney or the, the attorney. Uh, based on the attorney, Mark Kupiak, uh, Alderman Raboyas moves to defer this item by the same roll call that was used to determine quorum. Um, hearing no objections, uh, this item is deferred. All right, now we are on, Nicole, thank you, staff. Uh, are we on our last item? On our last item. All right, middle of page 11. Document number 20419, 27th Ward, ordinance was referred on June 17th of 2020. Common address is 1012 through 1024 West Randolph Street and uh, 147 to 155 North Carpenter Street. Change request, C13 Neighborhood Commercial District to DX5 Downtown Mixed Use District. And our attorney is Kate Duncan. Kate. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee on Zoning. My name is Kate Duncan. I'm an attorney with Ackerman LLP with offices at 71 South Wacker Drive. I'm appearing this afternoon on behalf of the applicant, L3-1020 West Randolph LLC in connection with application number 20419. Present this afternoon on behalf of the applicant is Whitney Robinette and also present, on, and also present is the architect for the project, Jillian Agdern from Hartron Plunkard Architecture. The subject property is located at 1012 to 1024 West Randolph Street and is currently located in the C13 Neighborhood Commercial District. The applicant filed this application for zoning amendment in order to reclassify the property to DX5 Downtown Mixed Use District. The subject property currently contains an existing building that was formerly used as a bank with multiple drive through lanes. Applicant is proposing to demolish the existing bank building and to construct a five story masonry building that conforms with the character of the neighborhood. Applicant proposes to use the building for retail on the ground floor with boutique office space on the upper floors. The property is located in Alderman Walter Burnett's ward and the applicant has met with the West Central Association, the neighbors of the West Loop and the West Loop Community Organization and has received the support of these three organizations. Um, we also have met with the alderman extensively and believe to speak on behalf of this matter today. On behalf of my client, I respectfully, respectfully request your favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, alderman uh, Burnett. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, as the counselor said, they have met with the local community organizations, which there are three and they've garnered their support. We also had a Zoom committee, Zoom community meeting and didn't have any objections. Um, this is near the um, landmark district over in the Fulton Market. Uh, it's, it's very fitting that they would uh, build a building of this size in that area. Uh, we appreciate them making the investment in our community. Um, the community supports that I supported and asked for uh, committee support. All right. Questions for the alderman? Um, I just have a comment, Walter. It's a handsome building, and um, this this building in of itself is not in the landmark district, but you've asked them to kind of conform with some of the similar architecture we see in the district. Is that correct? No, I didn't ask them. They, uh, th this is a, you know, unique because this is a, a young uh, organization uh, and they saw fitting to, uh, to do that. And I appreciate that and the community appreciates it. Yeah. So I, can't, I can't take the credit for it. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, questions for Alderman Burnett or the applicant? 
Hearing no questions, can I get a motion to move to pass by the same roll call as the one that determined quorum? So moved move by Alderman Austin. Alderman Austin moves to pass. Um, any objections to that motion? Hearing none, the item is passed as revised. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, I, I think we have no more items on the agenda. Uh, I want to thank my committee members for their patience. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So Riley, so moves. Alderman Riley, Al Alderman Riley, you're you're quiet today. Mm -hmm. I, do we have no implications in your ward, Alderman? Nope. Not this, not this week. Okay, we'll double up the next time. I think. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman uh, Riley moves to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The, the meeting is adjourned.